Velveteen Dream. Welcome back to the Why So Serious Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon, and Devin and Mike are back with us. And we are back for another episode to talk this week's news and comic books, TV, movies, and random news as well. So, uh, But before we get started, uh, we have a special guest today. We have the two ladies from the Two Woke Girls Podcast. How's it going, Lauren and Gabby? Hey, what's up? What's up? Hey, Yay. y'all. I'm excited. So uh, this is one of my favorite <laughs> podcasts to listen to, and it's funny because sometimes I'd be listening to it and I'd be like, uh, "I'm learning like mad shit," but also <laughs> it's mad wow. entertaining as well because. Uh, That's good to hear. Oh yeah, absolutely. Listen, last episode you guys were talking about like the pick me's, and oh, yes. and I was like, so part of me was like, uh, I'm like a cishet male, so I probably shouldn't like comment on the pick me. But then I was like, but at the same time, I'm thinking to myself, like, yeah, I agree with them because all that shit they doing don't make these niggas want them anymore. So exactly, exactly. <laughs> so it was. I was well, like, I'm, I'm glad some cis had males said it, so maybe we can take it yeah. and, and put it on the show or something, so people can hear from y'all's perspective because they just think we're bitter, right? And oh. Lauren is married, so it, they Lauren is married, so they be like. They probably think that her husband is at home unhappy as fuck, and then I'm here single, so they just, oh, she's bitter because she can't get a man. So yeah. it's nice to hear that y'all agree. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no, it's so definitely a thing. None of the pygmies I know are married. Like, the people that I know personally who are pygmies, they're the furthest thing from, and it's just, I don't, I don't, have, I don't know what that means, but, yeah. So no, they're they usually, they they're usually mad. They're usually, like, I'm out here staying at home, I ain't going out to the club, and she over there going out shaking her ass and she got a man why can't i get like that type of things what i usually hear right and so yeah. for me it's like i'm like part of me is like uh i used to be like i'm not gonna judge nobody but then i was like but the difference between that is i don't have a problem what you want to do but when you try to say that like somebody else the way somebody else lives is wrong because right. you don't live that way that's what's like that's where it becomes like the whole pick me yeah. thing like you can be like a respectability person respectability politics person i guess i mean that's not my lifestyle but if you want to live that lifestyle fine but if you want to put that on other people that's when it gets to that point where i'm like uh you gotta get out the paint but uh so yeah, okay like I, I feel like you know as for, for the pick me like situation for me like i feel like as as a as a sense of man like i'm just a observer of it and like i just don't participate in it because like you know like I feel like, you know, black girls rock. Y'all should be out here supporting each other and shit like that. But, like, it's shady behind closed doors. Like, when they make side comments, you're like, well, why would you even say that? So, like, I just I just have, a, you know, observer's opinion on it. Like, but I don't get it. You know what I mean? Because, like, to down somebody else, to, to uplift yourself doesn't really help anybody, you know? But it's the same thing. Like, it's, But the problem is I don't think it's as, like, prevalent as people – like I don't think I don't think any of these like things are that prevailing. It's just annoying when you hear it, right? Because yeah. I think sometimes people try to put everything in the box, and everybody's not in this box. But when you hear people talk like that, it really makes you upset. Uh, but we also have different. Some... You can live different ways and be happy different ways, and I think this is really what it is. It's, you don't have to live a cookie cutter lifestyle because patriarchy is telling you to. Yeah, true. Exactly. So yeah. Uh, so why don't you talk uh, a little bit about like how your show started and uh, how it's been going on, how long you've been doing it, and what are some of your favorite episodes and what are the type of things you talk about on the show? And then I got questions for y'all, so. <laughs> oh, okay. Excuse well, me. We've been around for about a year. Um, it started last year originally with another uh, co-host, and we just wanted to have a platform where two girls, two girls from the 30 South are just talking on shit. Um, and through, you know, things happen and you go through transition. So I ended up getting Gabby as a co-host. 
some aspects. We hiatus. And yeah, we just been kind of kicking it ever since. It's worked out really well. Gabby has a very, very, very like um, awesome background in like medical things and health and stuff. So she added that like really important element to the show because I, I ain't see it. Like I ain't see it. Like Gabby is <laughs> an expert. I just be out here talking. To it. I'm not an expert. Lauren is. <laughs> Look, puppy, y'all were talking about me and Brandon, too. We were talking about what? Y'all were talking about me and Brandon, because Brandon is an expert on all this stuff, and Mike is an expert, and I just I just show up. That's all I do. <laughs> I, just, I, I, tell, I tell people that. I tell people Lauren is the boss, and I just, I'm here for the ride, and I add my, you know, I add my two cents or whatever, but Lauren started this. It's her baby, and I'm just glad to be here. Well, you're an awesome co-parent, then. I say that. Hello, a co-parent. I love the show. Right on out. And I love Houston. So, like, we got an uncle in Houston. So, Devin, before we got on, he was like, man, I listened to this show. It made me want to move to Houston. And I'm like, hey. And so, but I, I've only been to Houston, like, a couple times. But I know the last time I went to Houston, somebody took me to, like, the the ratchetest club I've ever been to in my life. And it was so much fun. <laughs> It was called Yakima. Yo, I don't even, I don't even know if it's like a club. It's like an after hour spot, and it was so ratchet. And I heard a mad right. story. Like, I had a, I had a barbecue truck out there. You got some barbecue after you left. Listen, got some food in after you left or something. Listen, I had that's, so much that's a good night. Listen, Devin you knows me. Like, that's, that's a good night. I used okay. to be a club promoter when I was younger. So, but all I live in DC, so all the clubs we had like a business. So all the clubs that we like signed contracts with and worked for were like these super nice high end clubs, like so, like. Oh, seven, you gotta eight, go to the ratchet club every now and then. No, that's my thing. So I don't that's, even go out yeah. that much now. But every time like me and Devin get together, we go out. I'm like, you know, we gotta find like a ratchet place. Oh so, my like, God. we went to New Orleans. We went to New Orleans uh, for WrestleMania. And I was, and Devin was like, all right, we're going to go out. And then I was like, look, I've seen these ratchet clubs on YouTube. We should go there. And then we just went there. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, that, no, it's so, like, it's all facts. And, like, I am the opposite of Brandon. Them days is over for me, like, and I live a middle-class existence, thanks to my parents. Shout out to Gina Tanya, because this middle-class, like, I ain't used to that shit. Like, that ratchet shit, when it get there, I respect it and I love, I just love black people and shit. But, like, that hood ratchet shit, Brandon loved that shit. So, like, one time when Brandon was moving from Phoenix to uh, back to Baltimore, right, <laughs> we drove and we stopped at my homegirl crib in Memphis, and Brandon was so determined to go out, I had to let that man go out. Yo, that, And I couldn't go because I seen it on YouTube, and I was like, bruh, I can't be in a place like that. <laughs> and, Brand- and Brandon said he had the time of his life. Like, he said, that was straight. I was like, yo. And then in New Orleans, that joint was everything. Like you said, like... Uh, they had they had the uh, the order to go after the club let out, and they had they had crawfish, they had all that, they had shrimp, they had oh, barbecue, yeah, they, they had chicken, yeah, they, they, and I, I got some before I left, and it was dope, you know what I mean? But shout out to all the ratchet it's spots, the best I got food. some. It, it is the best food. That after club let out food is the best, especially if it's on site. But yeah, so that, that's my Houston story. But we we both love Houston, so we that's why we like that's part of the reason why we like the show too much because y'all definitely y'all definitely some Southern girls, which we like. Hey, I got a question for y'all. So like, what's y'all Labor Day classic like? Because I mean, y'all was talking about uh, Prairie View and uh, both of our, a lot of our cousins are graduated from Prairie View, so uh, I know a little uh, bit about the view. And uh, y'all was doing I don't that know slander about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about it. Um, I don't acknowledge them. No, <laughs> they don't exist in her world. They don't exist to me. Matter of <laughs> fact, Tiger. So, oh, okay. So you went to Texas? I'm okay. Very, very proud. Texas Southern University alum, oh. class of 2009. Shout the out, shout out. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Hey, you know, uh, you know, a dude named uh, Mike Webley. He ran track there. He graduated. No. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, my man Webb. I'm, I, I don't know if I said this on our show, but I'm pretty, I don't want to say I'm anti-social, but I'm very, I, I really want to say I'm shy. So there are lots of people that people be like, oh, you should not know. And I'm like, yeah, I just went to school and, <laughs> and, and left. And I didn't really talk to people unless they talk to me first. 
So my exposure. I, did, I don't really know people. Lauren is our social butterfly. Okay. Oh yeah, everybody. you can tell. Because I'm I'm a Libra, so I just I I have never met a stranger in my entire life. Literally, I can talk to anybody. <laughs> so Lauren, you uh, who went to uh, who went to A and M? I didn't know. Nobody oh, was out there. Oh, <laughs> okay. Hey, hey, listen. One of us went no, no, no. Florida, Florida, oh. Florida, Florida, Florida. Oh, no, no. Oh, oh, hey, that, that's, that's, one of the, that's one of Gabby's best. One of my okay. best days went to FAMU. Oh. FAMU is uh, definitely Florida, a, a fun. Yeah, it's a fun, it's a fun place. Listen, oh. my, my exposure to TSU all came from Devin the Dude talking about it. Oh, so. wow. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, my, yeah. that's my that's my yeah. that's my uh recollection of TSU. I was gonna say that's very interesting, but <laughs> I was gonna ask y'all if y'all listen to that Travis Scott and how y'all feel about it and do they have the Trapped and Screw version out yet? The who? Oh Travis Scott yeah. afterwards? Yeah, yeah, that joint go. I, I don't like Travis Scott and I don't know. I'm trying to turn it on to my, to my youth or if I really like his music. But, like, I ain't had to. And then he fucked with all the people that I like. Like, he rapped with Drake. He did with 21 Savage. Young Lee Fogel Weekend in there. It's like right up my. I want to be young, but I'm not young no more, Allie. Yo, don't beats go. You know, take you back. Like, on Astro World, they definitely take you back with the beats, yo. Yeah, oh, yeah. like, it was, it was definitely, though. And I can't. And I hate to. I don't want to throw no Nicki Minaj, say, but, like, it was not a comparison. <laughs> no, no, yo, and like, I'm glad y'all ain't, I don't know if y'all did, had an episode before, like, where y'all was, like, y'all talked about Nikki, but like, it's a sad, it's definitely a sad day, uh, when you can, you know, humble yourself and realize you're not number one no more because you got competition, like, that's crazy, it's very bad. Yeah, we talked about her briefly, about that whole, gotta get those stuff together, sis, and you gotta let other people be great. It's a, it's enough room for everybody. You made a, you made a lot of money. You and it's not fun for a while. while. Didn't she go in somebody DM like like a few months like a yeah. month ago? <laughs> uh, her and Safari had that. Who gave a very bad? And I felt like the, what Rana said was like a very valid critique. Like she wasn't dragging it. She was just very valid things that she would say of somebody. Cause she's a fan. She was a fan, and you know, just I don't know. But you just want to do that. You can't say nothing to. You can't say nothing to that sounds remotely critical. And you're putting blocking. That's what that shit was. Yep. Okay, my, my last question for y'all is: Who did y'all look at? Yo, first of all, I came prepared today. Like you know, what I mean, I want to be, I want to be more of a vocal point. You know, what I mean, I want that baby something. ask his question. Thank you, sir. Uh, who did y'all logo? That logo is dope. Lauren. Oh, did y'all get a new logo? I feel like I just saw an update today. Yeah, I just be doing stuff. I just be trying to see what it looks like. Um, it really I have mean, a lot of downtime. It's like I have a job that keeps me busy, but there's big gaps and here's the downtime. Right. So yeah, I'm just playing around with something. Uh, no. yeah, also, dope. Gabby, I'm with you. I'll never own a home. I'll never own a home. <laughs> yeah, it's just not for me. I, it's funny that you say that because I was talking to uh, my home, well, my potential homeowner besties, um, or my bestie and her husband the other day about it, and they were like, well, they were like, you know, it's obviously not a process, it's for the faint of heart or whatever, and it's all kind of stuff that can go wrong, and I was just like, it just doesn't make sense for me. You know, like, I'm single, I'm probably going to be single forever. If I get a boo, I don't really plan on, I don't think I want to live with that nigga permanently, so. <laughs> Yo, Gabby, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just got a whole, oh I got a whole podcast to like pray, like, version oh my of God. Him. Y'all are like Thanks. two pies in a pea, man. Y'all sound exactly like. <laughs> oh, man. Like, I just, I don't, I'm, you know, I'm getting, I'm at that age now where I like things a certain way and I'm particular. And it's like, you know, I don't, I wouldn't mind if he came over every day, but like, bro, you got to go home because when you start <laughs> trying to infringe on my, like, you need to go. Because if you start paying bills, then I have to compromise with you. So, yeah. Like, oh my gosh. We, I feel like I heard like, this. Like, if verbatim. we got to work. And then I come home and you beat me home and you already watching TV and you pay the bills. Like, I got to let you watch whatever you want to watch. But if it's my house, I could be like, hey, it's my house. And then That's you don't problematic. Like it, I could be like, hey, I love you, but you could go home and watch your TV. You can go wow. home. 
I ain't that bad. I mean, yeah. Yes, you are. About yes, you are. Words. You're exactly the I same. I mean, that's a very simple, but I'm just, you know, I like my own space. And I just, yeah. I'd be like, even if I had a little dude, like, I just don't want you to live here. <laughs> I, I support that. I support that. I definitely support that. But there's no reason to buy a house for me because. Not at all. But, and then you have to fix stuff on your own. Like, I, look, I, I, I hate that shit. My daddy fixed everything oh, still, and I can't do it. Like, if something go wrong with my car, my dad, daddy, can you do this? Daddy, can you take. <laughs> I, I am not there yet. I am not in my life where and I want to go out in this have world. Money for all of that. Like, you can't just be like, oh, the water heater broke and call the front office. You got to, like, the water heater broke, and we got to go immediately to Home Depot and figure <laughs> out. Like, I can't do it. One time, our, we had, at my mom's house, we had a gas water heater, and it went out. And I would think I was, like, the only one home, and they were trying to tell me how to like a pilot. And I was like, I'm not equipped for this. Like, I'm going to set all of us on fire. I'm blow maybe, everybody up. Like, maybe we just, just need to wait. <laughs> so, like, no, it's not for me. So, yeah. I'm with you. I mean, like, you, you got more questions, Devin? Um, is UT gonna be good oh this year? I mean, I know the answer to that. Yes. That ain't gonna happen. <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all got a, Y'all got a freshman quarterback out there about to get rocked. Yeah. We got a we got a white coach who's gonna recruit some stuff. <laughs> God, like we thank need, you. Like we look at this. Look at this anti-blackness. Got a white man. Look at this anti-blackness. Hey, only the only the white ones can leave us to. Hey, look, if it's all white, it's all right. You know what I mean? Like he gonna leave it to the Charlie, promised land. And the thing is, I respect Charlie Strong, and I understand he has to be the Barack Obama. You see, he couldn't bring the fucking Migos in the hood niggas up in there. He had to bring <laughs> the nice other straight like young black men, but unfortunately. Everybody else had thugs, and now we have with the nice black men, and it just wasn't getting, it wasn't getting done. Um, he just couldn't get a quarterback, man. But no, but I think we're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. What did the homie say from uh, Black Klansman with the with the right white man? You can do anything? Yeah. <laughs> you can do, do anything. anything with the white white person. Yeah. You, you can. Right one forward. It's absolutely yeah. true. It's <laughs> absolutely true. So, Gabby, Gabby and Laura, how did you guys meet? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we used to know each other when we were younger, like when we were actual kids. Um, our brothers used to play baseball in the same little little league, and of <laughs> course, play softball. <laughs> yeah, and then you know we lost contact or whatever. And then social media, you start following people, mm-hmm. and you were like, "Oh my god, hey girl, what's going on?" Blah blah blah. And then they, she started the podcast, and I was like, "Oh my god, I used to." Like, I don't know, somehow she gave me her number. I really don't want to call myself a soccer, but at some point Lauren was like, well, here's my number. <laughs> and um, so I started text. I was listening to the podcast. I was like, oh, my God, I love this episode, blah, blah, blah. And I just, like, text her every now and then to check in and tell her how much I love the show. And then, like she said earlier, life happened, and she took a hiatus. And she asked me to come on this show. <laughs> And I, I was thinking she was just wanting me as, like, a guest. And I was like, okay, yeah. She was like, no, girl, you want to be the co-host? And I was like, oh. You want to be the other woke girl? I was like, okay. <laughs> and so that's how that's how we got here. That's um, dope. That's dope. And it has, it's been very dope. We um, Lauren knows a lot of people, and she's super woke. <laughs> she's super woke. As I tell everybody, and I'm not ashamed of it, like, Lauren is the wokest of the two of us. Um. <laughs> But if you bring that balance, because sometimes I'm all the way in the mood. <laughs> Lauren goes into the deep end of the wokeness, and I'll be like, hey, yeah. come back. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the regular people who are listening on. Come oh, back. Oh, <laughs> man, but it's, that's dope. it's good. I think, you know, I, I see people, and so many people listen to us, and I had no idea. Like, I was just, you just be talking, and, and it feels like you're talking into the void. And then you meet people who are like, oh, my God, like, I listen to your podcast. I love it. And I'm like, what? And you're like, you listen to me? Like, mm-hmm. That's so like, dope. Even yeah. my friends, my friends still listen to it. And, you know, like, at first, I thought they were just doing it, like, to support. And they were like, no, bitch, we like to hear what you got. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, well, that's, like, one of my homegirls texted me today and was like, um, I'm trying to catch up on the episodes and I'm on the website. And it's only the current episode. And I was like. Okay, I'll text Lauren. But it's been a really fun ride. And so we, you know, trying to 
keep at it so we can eventually quit our white man jobs. And yeah. <laughs> I don't like, know if I can leave my. Like, I can't leave Corporate America. I got a good. I got a really good uh, job doing a whole bunch of nothing. I don't know if I'm leaving. That, oh, yeah, what, I would, oh, you want? So you wanted them? You wanted them? Them lucky niggas. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, Listen, I'm, he, get, he gets paid well. He don't do nothing. He's doing his podcast at work right now. Right now, every so wait, week he does his are podcast you an IT at work. Person? No, no, he works at Southwest, oh, and he get to fly for free. You out here? Don't be out here shouting them out. Oh, I'm you work for Come on. Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, it's 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 good. Life is good. I'm not gonna lie. He's everywhere okay, so every week. But I've also so like as so as white man companies go, I've heard that Southwest is one of the you know a really good one to work for. Oh, uh, yes. what I'm telling you is it is the best. Uh, they treat me very well. Uh, I'm compensated very well, and um, people love what I do, and I love them for loving that because my profit sharing goes up <laughs> every year. Well, listen, I mean, so listen, I ain't mad. I'm not saying I'm definitely, you know, I don't like my white man job. But if I had a job <laughs> like yours, where it sounds very, uh, you know, not and whatnot. I love what I do, and I love what I do, yeah. So, yeah, so I would leave that, but yeah, me and, me and Lauren don't like our white man job, so. I, I dig it. I dig it. Yeah. Death to those oppressors. All right, let's get into the show. Let's do so it. we have another co-host. His name is Mike, but he gets, he usually get quiet when we do oh. like black shit. Mike, you still there? I am still here, learning a lot. <laughs> by the way. Hey, my man came out the bushes with that shit. <laughs> right, oh my god, right. I was not ready. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been here the whole time. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I generally, uh, I feel like there. As Brandon always says, two Americas, so I just sit here quietly. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm tripping. I did not, I'm not ready for my... I had no idea. <laughs> oh, man. That's usually how it is. Y'all went Mike just hiding in a cave. Oh, by the way, we have another co-host. Yeah, Mike makes the show, though. That's what makes the show great, though, honestly. <laughs> oh, I am Listen, crying. one time we had a guest, uh, shout out to my man Rashani, and... <laughs> He started telling this story about like saying nigga at his job or something like that. <laughs> and so he started No, saying, no, with his wife. Oh, with his wife. <laughs> he said like his him and his wife having this conversation. And it was like twenty seven niggas in the conversation. <laughs> and Mike was just sitting there quiet the whole time. And it was so funny. It was, I was dying laughing and I had to put the uh, podcast on mute, my mic on mute. I was laughing so hard. Oh, that's um, good. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> oh. All right. So, uh, so usually how we start the show um, is we go around to everybody on the show and ask if you did anything nerdy in the last week. So, Lauren, we'll start with you. Have you done anything nerdy in the last week? Have I done anything nerdy? I'm sure I have because I'm pretty fucking nerdy. Um Oh, so yeah, that's what I've been doing. I am in the process of rewriting all of the Harry Potter novels. Okay. I have, you know, an original set somewhere, but I want to read them again, and I want to introduce them to my son, who's 11. So I'm trying to find like, another set. So if y'all know somebody who's selling some original ones, I'll take the new covers. I don't, I'm okay with that, but if y'all know some folks, let me tell you my ridiculous thieves thing. Let me know because I would really like to get those books back again. No. Um, um, yeah. Mike. And I've been helping my son with his nerdy ventures. What's he into? <laughs> so he's a YouTuber. Um, he just started, like, well, actually, he's been having it for a couple of months or now. He's a YouTube gamer. Um, and I didn't even know that was a thing, but he plays games on YouTube. And he watch them, which is. <laughs> wild so yeah we're we're very apparently i'm very nerdy with people. my husband does coding and web development my son is oh, wow. stupid yeah i have a three-year-old i don't know what she's gonna be into yet but i'm pretty sure she she, she might be the least nerdy of all of them you're so a whole stable of dog over back there to play with y'all. <laughs> so he's not nerdy <laughs> so mike you you're in that harry potter you you, you know anything about that about getting i do books? like harry potter uh what do you mean you know where to I'm find them. I'm trying to them. find the old, oh. like, the, with the original covers. So they made new with new covers, but I want to, like, find another set of all the, like, original, you know, pretty I, covers or whatever. I saw one in an old, but like, an old, but like, a self-proclaimed old, like, not like a Barnes & Noble, like, it's an old bookstore, like. Like a and, real bookstore. 
Oh. Like a real, yeah, like a not a chain. Like you got to find those like old school. Like they literally, they don't even bring in the new stuff. They just have like a bunch of old decrepit <laughs> things. But I, I did really find. Mean, I- there was some i was in there one time there was some really i went in there looking for comic books <laughs> but there was some really interesting stuff in there like they had like i mean they had some i found that the harry potter stuff was there um and i didn't buy it actually because when i was younger and they were coming out my grandma actually bought them for me and then like she wrote like a little grandma message in them so probably no. that's but, dope <laughs> so i didn't need those but i found like there's like old playwrights in there that are like missing pages but like they're like 70 years old you know they had some like 100 year old books in there it was pretty interesting so you could probably find them there aside from that honestly online probably but it's gonna I be like to, super yeah I have, to look. I have to i have to i have to i have to i have just been trying to not spend all my money but i might have to spend some money yeah you're gonna pay the original money. ones they're like valuable now like the original like yeah uh gabby what about you you done anything nerdy in the last week um, I am a perpetual nerd. I like just recently got my grown ass diagnosed with asthma. So, um, oh, wow. pushing, yeah. up my cl- pushing up my glasses every couple of minutes because they fall off my face. And... I just got glasses. So I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I just, oh my God. I wearing glasses since I was 10. So, oh, um, I just joined the club. I'm sorry. I have, I have I've have been laser, blind forever. I have laser privilege. But, so okay. I well, you can't there. just be quiet right now. Cause <laughs> <laughs> like he got don't your be free now. Like, like don't be able to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but besides pushing my glasses up every couple of minutes because they slide off my face and taking two pumps of pro air every six hours, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, like general nerdy stuff. That's like that's my life now. So no, but I, I've been a nerd forever. But that's the nerdiest thing that I can think of. I'm clumsy as hell, so I probably bumped into something. Oh no! Didn't have my glasses on. What's the worst? <laughs> like, what's the worst clumsiest industry in, in, injury you gave yourself? The worst one? I, I can't think of a worse one, but like I most recent one. Definitely tripped. I've definitely tripped over things where people are like, "My nigga, what is wrong with you?" Like <laughs> nothing. Like, there's nothing to trip over. I was, like, literally just tripping over my own feet because, I don't know. Um, I bumped into a glass door before because I wasn't really paying attention. It just oh, kind of, like, Lord. kept walking. Into the- <laughs> like, yo, that nerd like <laughs> yo, she got the black nerd card right there, dog. Like, oh, that, that nerd card is black, yo. That is real. Yeah. I, um, I'm pretty nerdy. Um, my whole life is just nerd, nerd life. Like, I used to have... In high school, I had glasses and braces at the same time. It was mm. super cute, though. Okay. But, like, okay. I didn't have, like, head gear or anything, but... Did yeah. You that I, was you, cute. Uh, I was cute, though. Did you have them color-coded with your money, like the dude on Insecure? Did I do what? <laughs> did you have green ones, like your money? You had green braces, like your money? Oh, uh, the green one was bad. No. Uh-uh. But I did used to change them. I did used to do the whole, like, oh, it's Valentine's Day. I need pink and red rubber bands. Oh, it's Halloween. I need orange mm. and black. Um, it's my birthday. I need pink because that's my favorite oh. color. Okay. I'm glad you gave that disclaimer. You were still cute, though, because I was like, you know, you oh, say you had glasses, yeah. glasses and bursts at the same time. People were like, hmm, that was, that was hard. Was still, it was still the 2000s, though, so, like. I wasn't out here looking terrible. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't like the 80s with head. I didn't have head gear. You know, the glasses were getting smaller. So I was, I was so stylish. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Devin, what about you? Man, uh... I first, I, first of all, I had a week. I had some days off because I had worked like 13 days in a row. And that joint got in the way. So I actually went to the Chrysler Museum. Uh, saw some new exhibits. That was dope. Um... I actually saw a glass blowing uh, demonstration, which was super cool. Um, That's so cool. Wow. Um, and then I went to a kickback. It was kind of nerdy because we did karaoke when we got there. Super drunk karaoke, though. So it was cool. That's not nerdy. That's like the opposite. Was it hip hop oh. karaoke? 
Yeah, you know, I mean, oh. then, uh, then we had the, the R&B shit, you know what I mean? I'm just um, kidding, Devin. You're like cultured you know. with this story. <laughs> and then um, the following day, um, I actually went to um, this Africana Fest that we had at the beach. And um, I got people to talk about the nonprofits and stuff like that. Uh, I saw, I found black incense. Like, so the black incense burner, that like, you take a coal and you put on some sand and you take a pinch of what is supposed to, I guess, supposed to be incense before you put it on the stick and you burn that joint and it makes your whole house smell like, like potent. Like it's real good. It's real good. Like incense. It's the best incense I ever smelled in my life. Um, and then um, I end up watching Voltron on Netflix. I finished uh, season Ooh. seven. Voltron is my, I got a Voltron t-shirt on right now. Matter of fact, uh, that's my, that's my joint. It's my jammy jam. Um, Watched my some of my animes. I watched Naruto. I mean Boruto, and then I watched um, Hero Academia, um, and then I after I get off this, yo, you you missing out because that joint is good from beginning. Like the the first episode is really good. Like it it is everything. It's a story of a, a young boy becoming a hero, and not because of the gifts he was given, because he wanted it. He did it. He earned it on effort. So it's super cool. Okay. Um, and then uh, Attack on Titan, and after I get off the phone with you guys, uh, it's going to be great. And um, I did some meditating, and I read some books. Um, ladies, if you have not read um, This Will Be My Undoing by Morgan Jenkins, you should check it out. Uh, it's definitely... This yep, by Morgan Jenkins. Uh, it came yeah, out early... I'm I haven't read it, but I've heard it was really, really yeah. It's good. it's amazing. Like I uh, when I was on vacation uh, in Bermuda, like I had, um, listened to it, and it touched my soul because I didn't know black women was out here dealing with stuff like that. Because like, I just never, you know, I don't have that. I don't have that window. And she gave you a window into her soul, into her story, and it was, it was real powerful, and I enjoyed it. And I watched Batman the animated series, and that was uh, my weekend. Okay, you did. Uh... Way That's more a lot. I, I was living my best life, yo. I was trying to live my best life when I was my days off. Uh, uh, Mike, what about you? <laughs> yeah, I have a funny story for you, actually. <laughs> yes. So, uh, you know, I, I talk a decent amount about my my dad to you guys, and he's a pretty funny guy, uh, Brendan. <laughs> uh, oh, you never met him, but so uh, five years ago, he would he he was he's very like my dad was born in Lebanon. You know, he he's very like, you know, old school. You know, not in like when he watches TV. It's got to be nonfiction or whatever. I've slowly began to change that over the years, and I'm getting him into into the movies. Okay, so, you know, I've been sort of like showing him the Marvel movies that I think he like. I never got to the Guardians with him because I think that's just too much, you know. But <laughs> he likes. I got him into Captain America and uh, you know Iron Man, and he, he even likes Thor. Like he said, Thor is one of his favorites. So, I showed him a movie. Um, this we watched a movie this past weekend and before i i tell you what it was i just want you to know that my dad he may i may be getting him into this but he hates cliffhangers my dad does not like <laughs> he doesn't like to be done that way he doesn't like to give all of his investment into this and then only to be like you know played at the end uh, so we watched infinity war uh <laughs> and he He's getting like so, it, like when my dad, when, when something happened, like first of all, he's sitting there like, tell me right now who's gonna die, or I swear, like he gets real angry with me. He's like, you don't, I, can't, I, I, I can't handle this. My, he's like, my heart can't handle this. You need to tell me right now who's gonna die. I'm like, dad, I'm not gonna tell you. I'm not gonna tell you who's. Gonna, and he's, you know, like someone, someone. It's like Thanos punches Spider Man in the face. He's like, this is stupid. I hate this. This is dumb. And then like a minute later, like Thor comes in on Wakanda, and he, you know, he's like freaking out. And then everyone died, and he was like, "Are you serious? Did you really? Did you really? I missed the Steeler game for this." He said, "I missed the Steeler game for this." He says, "It's preseason." Uh, <laughs> he was, uh, he, he like, I was, it was really funny. I guess I don't know. I guess you kind of had to, you had to know him a little better for that to be really no, funny. No, it's still funny. It's still but funny. He He's was like, like, "You wasted my time, son." <laughs> I was like, "So you didn't like it?" He's like, "No, I loved it. That's the problem." Like, <laughs> So. <laughs> That's too funny. You must not don't like cliffhangers and then you turn them into a movie war. Like, you are a, you are a horrible person. <laughs> You're a horrible person. It was, it was pretty funny. We had a good time. That's it? That's it? I mean, I I went home this weekend because I've been doing some stuff with some drone work on the side. But the Tell only them. other thing... Tell well, about the drone work, Mike. 
So I'm starting a. Uh, I, I like. I mean, that's not what I do for uh, a living, but on the totally. side, I kind of fly drones for like photography or for like people who want to, you know, put their house up on the market. They like will be like, can you film it for me, so that they can get like a better. I can make 3D models with the drone, or whatever. So I was doing. I was doing that stuff. I, I've AKA been going. That's, that's real nerdy, man. That's too yes. Much. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, my drone's autonomous, so I just tell it, like, I give it a little <laughs> bit of information, it just does it all for me, so, like, the people are, like, I actually am not able to get paid yet, because I don't have my license yet, I get it next week, so I've just been doing work for marketing right now, because I can't illegally accept a paycheck yet, because uh, I don't have my, my license, but I did that, and then I did, uh, the last thing I did was, I was working from home on Friday, and I really hope no one from my office is listening to this, because I don't do anything when I work from home, I was watching a movie, and the only movie that I could find, I didn't want to watch something I'd already seen. So uh, I, uh, I bit the bullet and I watched the most recent Transformers movie just so oh, I could. Oh, no, God. Here's the thing. I maintain that these movies are not very good. But if you like giant yeah, robots fighting. self-love them, problems, man. <laughs> I'm just, I'm telling you, it's like Fast and Furious. You just got to know what you're getting no, into. No, it's not like Fast and Furious. No. Absolutely not. It's just a bunch of no, action. They, 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 those movies got like progressive. I mean, like exponentially worse. Like each <laughs> yeah. one was yes. worse than the last. Very true. Yes. Oh, you must not love yourself, bro. Mm-hmm. I, there was nothing. There was nothing on that I hadn't seen already. I'd rather wanna... watch the wall than that. Um, <laughs> uh, you done? Yeah, it was pretty much it. I didn't really. Yeah, I saw yeah. you kind of staggering at the end. Um. I ain't do nothing nerdy. Uh, I read some comic books. Oh. I watched Batman the animated series for our show in a week or so. Uh, I don't think Insecure is nerdy. I watched some Insecure. No. Uh, yeah, that's it. So I ain't really do no oh, nerdy stuff. I got one more nerdy thing I did. I went to go see Happy Time Murders because I, I just. Oh myself yeah, I'm supposed to be going to see that. I heard that was good. It was good. It was so good. If you like Muppet movies and that's the type of stuff you like, you into like, and you can just go along with it, you know, it was good. It was really good. All right, so mm-hmm. that was a lot of intro. So let's get to these news stories so we don't keep uh, Gabby and Lauren too long. Uh, the first one. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, there was another mass shooting. Um, um, who's surprised? I'm not surprised. Uh, this time. Yeah. It was, yeah. This time it was over a video game at a Madden tournament in Jacksonville. Unfortunately, the dude was from Baltimore, where I'm from, so there's that. Uh, so, yeah. Um, another white man with a gun that got angry, and he went and shot up a place. So, uh, so Lauren, Gabby, what are the chances that something <laughs> actually gets done this time? Um, on a scale of thoughts and prayers, that's, yeah, that's that's it. That's all we got. Honestly, I think we well. I know we said this on this show. There's one Sandy Hook happened, and nobody was trying to do gun reform. It was just at this point, it's a lost cause. Like, white babies died. White, like, babies. white yeah. elementary age children. And, and y'all be still... shot. Like, I was like, yeah, we ain't doing shit. Like, y'all let one of y'all own white colleagues, a white woman, and that get shot in the head, and they didn't do shit. And then some babies died, and they didn't do nothing. Nah. Like, y'all don't care. And it's really odd to me, because, and we, like I said, we talked about this on the show, you know, we live in Texas, so everybody has guns. Um, I grew up with guns in my house. I have a gun. Like, I just, like, I've shot, <laughs> like, I've shot a rifle before. I've shot an AR-15. Like, and I just, like, it's not necessary. And it's definitely not necessary for people to get them the way that, with the ease that they get them. So I don't understand why people are so against better control of how we get guns. Like, when I bought my first gun or when I bought my gun, um, I went to Academy and 30 minutes later I had a gun and yeah, they took my license and they did whatever they had to do. But when you think about it, it's like, who really needs a gun in 30 minutes? It's harder to get an abortion in Texas than it is <laughs> right. to get a gun. It's like, yep. to get a goddamn doctor's appointment. No like, bullshit. <laughs> like, it's harder to get a well woman's appointment to buy a gun. So, Listen, it's hard I- to get birth control. It's harder. It's harder to get a regular movie ticket. I remember 
when they changed the rules for going to the movies and for rated R, you had to be over 17 and remember, like, asking older cousins or you have to tell your parents, like, can you go buy me the tickets? Tell me them tickets. Right. And, like, you can just go and buy a gun and nobody cares. And everybody's like, it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly normal. And I got my rights and the Second Amendment and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I mean, we talked about this on the show. To me, it's just kind of like, y'all do realize they're not going to, like, retroactively go into people's houses and take all your 15 million guns. <laughs> like, if you have guns at your house, like, they're not going to come and be like, all right, well, we got to collect them hoes, too. And like, my thing right. is, if they did, what the fuck you going to do? Yeah, right? you're not going to do nothing. That's, that's always that's been always my point. Argue, yeah, people are always, like, come and try and take them. Like, you're not going to do shit. If that's yeah, not going to it's a federal in your house. 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 So I'm gonna my door, I'm going to be like, it's in the, it's on the nice thing. Yeah. 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 Mama did <laughs> Get it. That was always really that's always been my argument. It's like, oh, we need to have the right to guns in case uh we need to overthrow the government. I'm like, nigga, the fuck no, they got tanks? To to <laughs> they got theory. not this only do they true. got tanks, they got nukes. They can shoot a nuke from <laughs> out of nowhere and blow your whole city up. There's nothing you're gonna do. But only anthrax and we're done. Like yeah. okay. But we like collectively as a we're done. We took a turn. We took a turn. Americans, we can't boycott anything for a specific amount of time. You gonna you gonna fight the government though? Yeah, yeah. Like to me, it's just like you. We we don't want to be inconvenienced by anything. Like that's just how American capitalism works. Like we are all, whether we're marginalized or not, nobody wants to be inconvenienced. So it's like y'all really gonna really you gonna fight the fucking government? That's You're gonna, gonna fight go the tyrannical government. Like bitch. it You can't even. We can't, can't even we can't can't even impeach Trump. We can't like nope. wait I don't on know it. if they're wait not for trying it. hard enough. That should be like they can't even impeach Trump with their own rules and their own government. The Civil War happened. People try to take up arms against the federal government and they and, and the South is still trying to recover from that ass whooping. In twenty eighteen. We still trying <laughs> to get our shit together from that ass whooping. So like, imagine now, now they're going to have to leave, but what are they going to have to leave the Pentagon and do some shit? They're going to just say they're just putting super measles out, super AIDS, or whatever they got, and we're done, and we're over. I just wish Second Amendment people would just tell the truth and be like, you know what, black people and Latino people, we heard this, and I would just feel better having a gun. Listen, like, the, that the gun laws that we do got, it. the gun laws that we do got came about right around the time of the Black Panthers arming themselves. Yeah, that's exactly what they were in response to it. California, all those places that have that, that was the quail black rebellion. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. So, they ain't gonna do shit. Mike, Mike. you just learned something. Bam. I already knew that. Okay. Look at Mike. <laughs> Mike say he won't. Look at Mike. Mike say, don't be trying to pull his car. Don't play him. Listen, I, I, went, I, mean to. I went to the same school that Brandon works at. It's called the Catholic University of America. I've seen a lot of arguments and uh, stupid people. <laughs> uh, so I know Brandon knows exactly what I'm talking about. Yep. So. I mean, it's Ooh. just, I think that, like, you're right. Like, there's absolutely, I mean, while while no one's going to do anything, if someone comes to your door and tries to take your, your stuff from you, no one's going to do anything. But I also feel like they're not going to do that anyway just because it's like, yeah, they're just, not gonna do that anyway. It's just it's too <laughs> it's unrealistic. But I will say that the system is so disorganized. It should not be by the state's own like decision. It should be like a national thing. Federal. It should be hard to a federal thing. Sorry, I'm not too politically uh, vocabulary whatever. We got but you. We got you. I'm just saying. No, like, we following you though. So there are some states where it's really hard, and some states where it's really easy. Well, it probably shouldn't be like that uh, because. You know, you want to go do something, you're just going to go to, like, you know, it just doesn't yeah, make that's sense. The whole, they be, be like, look at all these shooters in Chicago, and they got tough gun laws. I'm like, nigga, Indiana's like you don't 15 need to, minutes yeah. away. They can go next door. <laughs> Indiana's like, like 15 minutes away. Why would I go through all those hoops when I can just drive 15 minutes and just walk back across the border with a gun? <laughs> and that, and that, I honestly don't even think that would be that hard. It seems like a, I mean, it seems like a solution that both sides should probably be able to agree with, although I doubt that would actually No, they happen. want, listen, the Republicans want to do the national shit, but they want to do it on the opposite. They want it so that if you get a gun license in Texas, you get a gun in Texas, that that shit's legal in every state. <laughs> they want to do it the yeah. opposite way. No, right. no, no. It, it needs to be, like, the process for acquiring 
a weapon of that caliber should be a universal process. Like, no, you know, and it should be hard, like really hard. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, like it should be hard. Like hell, a driving test is easier. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then you have to keep renewing your license and stuff and showing them that you feel capable of being on the road and you ain't gonna get out there and do fucking drugs. There's penalties. Facts. And I just thought there's just nothing that you have to prove to say, I'm gonna be responsible with this weapon that could hurt, that could kill somebody. That, that is, is it. I, I like it's harder to get for me to get a drone license than it would be for me to get a gun. Like, I had to do you know how much I studying like, you I have to, to have do. A for a damn drone. You don't oh. you don't need to, but like to get paid for work you do, and it's In harder. FAA. Like FAA. I got to study a whole lot of stuff to pass that test. It's wow. like hard. It's a hard test. I'm taking it in like a week and a half. I need to know the same rules that actual like pilots know. Like what? the te- the test oh, is wow. so hard. The test is so hard that I I took a class. You don't need to take a class, but I did. And the teacher was like, after you get your drone license, you guys might as well become pilots because all you need to know after that is how to fly a plane, like take plane lessons. But like the laws that I need to know are the same that like pilots need to know. That's what, and and it's a drone. It's like a little quadcopter. But it's it's governed by the FAA. (laughs) Yeah, but But it's a national thing governed by the FAA. So my license is good in all 50 states. And, you know, I'm just saying it's like, that's how hard that's it is wild. to get a drone license. And I could probably <laughs> that's so <Google>. crazy. <laughs> like I need to know. That's super wild. Then I need to know radio commands. Like if I if I have to if I'm flying near Reagan, I have to be able to radio Reagan's air tower and be like, yo, like, you know, I'm in I'm, your area. Please don't shoot me down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's how hard it is just to get just to get a license to fly a drone for money. But that's you know that's why though, like, because well, people were are around Reagan too much. And well, I mean, you gotta do that no matter with what. Drones. You're at. Also, you can no. trap an explosive to a drone and like. Very true. Well, you know, but, there's that. Thank you, Mike. But so, in some cases, drones could be more dangerous than guns. But also, how often is that happening? Right. Uh. All right. So uh, another nigga that's not trash. I mean, that is trash. Uh, Twitter Jack is going to testify in front of the House Committee. So, for those of you who don't know, uh, so recently there's been like this thing that like Facebook and somebody else like took down Alex Jones off their platform, and some Republicans is mad talking about like this is infringing on our free speech rights and all that bullshit. So, somebody asked Jack, was he going to take uh, Alex Jones off of Twitter? And he was like, no. And it was like, why? He's trash. And he was like, well, he may be trash, but he ain't break none of our policies. So then uh, this reporter pulled up like 25 tweets this year that broke Twitter's policies. And then Jack was <laughs> like, um, well, we can't punish him for stuff he did in the past. And then he went on Hannity for some reason. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, he went on Hannity. And he went on Hannity, and he's talking about all this free speech bullshit. So now, now they're calling him to Congress uh, to talk about like um, – this free His speech stuff. Bias, yeah, but here's the thing. Jack ain't liberal, first of all. I mean, maybe he is. At all. He it's ain't really liberal like right. my type of liberal shit. Right. And if you're on Twitter, the people who are getting harassed the most are like black women, trans people, LGBTQ people. Like they're getting tra- they're getting fucking harassed. Everybody but straight white men. Yeah, daily, <laughs> like daily harassed, and then they get and then they get banned for responding back to them, like. I saw, I saw, like when this shit was going on, like a bunch of women, like it was going viral, like a bu- the stuff uh, that women were dealing with, and I saw some women get banned for saying like men are trash, and then they got fucking yeah. suspended. <laughs> they got suspended for saying men are trash. But here's a nigga, Alice Jones, literally promoting propaganda about a sex trafficking ring at a pizza store, which a nigga saw and rode up into that store and shot it up. <laughs> It just doesn't make any sense on what's going on today. And uh, this is all that right-wing bullshit. Because, listen, the the Republicans are bringing... (coughs) This is why this world is so backwards. Republicans think that liberal, like progressives and liberals, like we think that like people like Jack and Mark Zuckerberg are cool. When I mean, maybe the white liberals do, but like the the black and brown people, they don't think these niggas is cool. And so the Republicans bring... We don't trust them. Yeah, we don't trust us. The Republicans are bringing Jack or... (laughs) up to Congress to like grill him saying like you're liberal and you're silencing conservative voices and and the rest of us are watching this like like when Mark Zuckerberg went up there they were grilling the fuck out of Mark Zuckerberg and I'm like but 
y'all realize like, we don't really fuck with him either <laughs> like that. <laughs> First of all, Mark Zuckerberg is like not human. Have you ever heard him speak? About anything, yeah, it's robotic. Yes, he is like a, a, absolutely a robot. I'm, I'm not even. That's yeah, not he's even got a like a god complex. Like he's trying to fix everything. It's because yeah. he's a robot. It's because he's a robot. He said he <laughs> I'm alone. Serious. He's that a guy's... white man that learned how to do a little bit. And so something... now he's... mediocre white men think they're the bomb. So a white man that can do a little something, that, that created something, they're probably some of the most insufferable people ever. Yeah, Pretty but didn't he steal that shit from his asshole. homeboy? The the Von the Von Winkles or Von somebody. Yeah, the the twin. No, his other homeboy. He has he has some friends. He had another friend that he's like Eduardo. Eduardo Hurst. Mm-hmm. The guy that plays the, the terrible Spider Man. I remember him in the movie. His name was Eduardo. That was his other homie. They helped him. And he like missed him over too. Yeah, Zuckerberg's trash. So. We'll see what happens with that. that. I mean, the one funny thing about when Zuckerberg was on there was when uh, Orrin Hatch old ass was like, oh, how do you make uh, money uh, on Facebook because it was free to sign up? And Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> looked around and was like, uh, we, sell, we sell ass, nigga. And he looked so lost. I'm like, yo, these dumb ass Republicans, they can't even, they don't even know how fucking Facebook make money. This is so ridiculous. They asked, they asked all the wrong questions. They really they did. All like, the I watched wrong that questions. and I was so I was embarrassed. I was like, this is this is actually this is absurd. Yeah, it was ridiculous. <laughs> um, so like, all right, we'll weird. we'll skip this Amazon one. But Amazon rich as fuck. We all know that. Um uh, so this is some white shit. Uh <laughs> this couple spent thirteen hours riding a Jurassic Park ride at Universal and then got engaged afterwards. Hold on, what time? Out? Oh, what's the clause up? So they they just stayed on the ride continuously, like I mean, so like three to they took sixty two consecutive rides. Oh my! What <laughs> the fuck? How? Mike, would you do that? There? Mike, would you do that? They just uh, got back in line. Make me hang up the phone on y'all. <laughs> <laughs> And I love, I love all the Jurassic Park, but I mean that is that's excessive <laughs> Look, that ride is, I mean, it's, it's an all right ride one time. You get wet, like, you ride around Jurassic, you like in this boat, and you see these dinosaurs, and then you go into, like, this warehouse, and it's like, oh, these dinosaurs about to attack you. Then a big T-Rex jumps out of nowhere, and then you go, like, in a big drop. That's basically the whole that, ride. Yeah, that shit scared me the first time I went there, because I struggled like They shit, rode that shit, shit right 62 so, times. It says it took over a half a day, but the California-based couple ultimately did it, gaining much more than the park's top title. And 62 consecutive rides in return, giving the attractions 84 foot drop straight into the water. The Alan Grant and Ellie Sadler wannabes went through multiple outfit changes during the 13th. So they was changing their clothes and getting back on that ride. The fuck? This is, you know what? what? This is specifically the kind of story why people across the world hate Americans. First of all, like, do you not have a job? Like. That's the first problem. Like, even as an American, as a working class American, I'm pissed off because I don't have that kind of time. Like, how did you even? I just, I'm angry, and this is why people hate Americans because this is stupid. <laughs> what are we doing? What Hold up, this? this is even worse. So Universal, <laughs> they, I guess they told Universal about this, so they let them record oh, this. God. So they recorded the whole thing. It's on YouTube. Oh like, my god. Uh, <laughs> that is worse. That that definitely makes it worse. God. It says Universal's theme park got involved to pull up the feet, allowing the duo to begin their endless river ride before park opening and recorded everything from the first drop okay. to the proposal. And then they and then they got <laughs> and they got engaged afterwards. Like <laughs> you know what? Because 'Cause they're perfect for each other because it, like if you ask me to ride any ride more than three times, we're done. Like, no, it's over, oh, it's a wrap. Right. And then they have to change outfits. Like, you no. Know, mm-mm. No. Nope. Mm-hmm. What are the chances How, that you meet somebody? I wonder what kind of sex life they have. A 62? Oh, this God. Time is so exactly. boring. That's right. Exactly. I was just thinking that. They probably used to they probably If you got to do something 62 times for excitement, then imagine what your sex life is like. They're either real right. bland or real nasty. No, they're real nasty. I they got to be real nasty. No, they real bland. If you can do the same ride 62 times in a row and get excitement out of it, that means they probably a missionary right. every every time they have uh, sex. But I'm saying, that means they already, already got to set the bar. <laughs> every time. They got to set the bar. Uh, they stepping that bar up. I would, uh, yeah, I think How they old are they? Like, 
Uh, they don't say how old. Forty. They are. No, they look no. like they're in their twenties. I can't. They don't say that's, how old that's they are. Super childish. Oh, apparently like, this ride is closing, and I guess this uh, something. Uh, it don't make no difference. That's so when they they because they said they're both uh, California based, so like they you, they didn't know each other. Like so, they found they were they lived in California. They both lived in California, and then we are gonna ride this ride. Like were they sitting by each other the first time? And then they was like, you know what? We're having a great conversation while we're riding a roller coaster. Well, no, they was already it. together. They're oh, not okay. strangers. That'd be even more okay, weird. Okay. <laughs> that, that, okay. Yeah, that was... Uh, the story is even weird, though. I have so many questions. Like, the more you tell us, I feel like I have more questions. I'm surprised they didn't have uh, some asshole like... Um, what what they call... What was that hashtag of that, that woman that was, like, tweeting on the plane? Uh, oh, Jocelyn. <laughs> <laughs> Jocelyn, psycho or something? What did they call her? The about Africa? No, Winmer was like, she switched seats with somebody, and then the two oh, the I two know, people I got together. She thought and she was live tweeting Yeah, them. yeah, yeah, that viral, that viral. Piece. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised somebody wow. wasn't doing crazy. that. Look, look at this picture. They on the ride by themselves on this one. This is the best oh. boat they bought them. This is ridiculous. I, I got to go. So did they, they shut the shit down for I guess I just. I, I, no, they I started like before the park opened. They, they started before the park opened, apparently. Oh, that's some real privilege. Yeah, see, that's, oh, that's what wow. I said. It's yeah, some right. extra it's white shit. That is extra white this shit. This shit is right. extra white. Um, they got money. Money, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into some comic book news. Uh, so y'all talked about this on y'all last show, but um, Eve Ewan is going to be writing Ironheart series uh, coming up. Yeah, that's the other kind of thing because I, I have to get that. I have to get that in series. Yeah, series is going to be great. Yeah. Also, we talked about it on our last show, but uh, basically Kevin Feige, the person who runs the MCU, he came out and did an interview, and he basically said that like the smartest person in the movie universe is Siri. <sighs> Yes, like and that made it. oh my gosh, that would be a white man was crying. Oh, it was, <laughs> yes. Twitter, Twitter was Mary Twitter was a fucking. They was mad as shit. Or feel that day. They was like, "Well, what about Iron Man? He built this suit." I'm like, "That rusty ass suit." So nigga. I'm like, they never left Wakanda. How could she be smarter than Tony and Bruce? Like, because I was like, why was he saying that? And oh clearly, God, she left funny. Wakanda. <laughs> like, first of all, that didn't make any sense. That, that shit was they funny. Left. They can leave. It's not like they, they can never leave. Yeah, that shit was so absurd. But uh, yeah, Evie is gonna write Ironheart. Ironheart. Basically, most of you guys who listen to the show probably already know this, but Ruby Williams took over as Iron Man when Tony was thought to be dead or he was in a coma. And then Tony came back, and so she took up her own manner. It was Ironheart, and she's basically this really smart black girl. She's a teenage black girl who went to Harvard. Chicago. And she basically saw Iron Man and said she can build that shit, and she built her own, like, basic Iron Man suit out of, like, real spare parts in her fucking garage in Chicago. Uh, So now she's getting her own book. And uh, Eve basically, so Eve said, people don't just gravitate toward Hulk or Captain America or Spider-Man. Because of their powers, the reason they say so and so is my favorite superheroes because who they are as people and what they stand for. So I think the really exciting thing is really building out Riri not just as Ironheart but who she is as a person. Specifically, what does it mean yeah. to be a teenage black girl from Chicago? Somebody who has lost family members to gun violence. Somebody who understands the realities of the community is going to bring something very different to questions about justice and who the good guy is and who the bad guy is and what do you do about that. So, uh, yeah, that means they're probably going to uh, make the police the bad guys. By the way, there's a there was a book called uh, Captain America Sam Wilson when Sam Wilson took over uh, Cap. Was being written, yeah, 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 yeah. It was being written My by Captain America Nick Spencer, black. and uh, that book was black as fuck. And they even had these uh, cops called the Americops that were like these drone cops that these rich white men created to go like terrorize the fucking black neighborhoods. And then that shit got caught on tape, and another hero, uh, like got beat up by the cops. Like it was mad black, but they didn't they didn't sugarcoat that shit at all, and it was I really, like really good. I would feel like Marvel is still a good with that shit. Like maybe y'all should think the bars just fit super low, but I just feel like Marvel has always done a better job with just diversity. And I hate using that word than DC. And I just I don't know what I I don't I, just, I 
I don't know. Just something I've been thinking about, like, a lot. Like, what would make me fall back in love with DC? And I was like, they don't have to do so much these black and black <laughs> Yeah, I mean, even from the beginning, like if you read, like, like Black Panther came out in like nineteen sixty-five or sixty-six or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. but it's like, black Panther. yeah, if you watch it, if you read it, it's like okay, it's you can tell us to sit, but it's not even really that yeah. problematic. It's just like some sixty shit. But even at that time, for <laughs> Stan Lee and Jack Kirby to like create a character like that, it was like seen as progressive, especially because like in his very first issue, the Fantastic Part Four goes there. And he basically Smart outsmarts spot. the fuck out of all of them. Like, not like overwhelms them with his athleticism or his strength. Like, he outsmarts them. And then he, he outsmarts them. And, they and he sits on them because he got, he got, hey, look, he sit on them be like, yeah, that, you know, that, that table right there is $66 million. What? Yeah, and he talks about how rich he is <laughs> and how rich the fucking nation is. And they, they basically explained that, like, uh, Wakanda was never. Uh, conquered by white Never people's colonized. imperialism and yeah. colonized. And like, this is like 1966. I'm like, it has some issues there, but for 1966, that's pretty damn good. It. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty fucking good. So I'm excited. Like, about you got book. some real good black friends, like, and you and you believed in them. Like, that's yeah. dope. Yeah, you know I mean? or you just stole the, they stole the fuck out of that story from like a dope black person who was like kind of expecting it. I don't know. But like, they just, I mean, they I'll just about leaving them down. Because even like, Black Lightning, I, like I said, I enjoyed the show. But just, I haven't read a lot of, like, I haven't read a whole lot of Black Lightning books, but just, like, compared to Black Panther and stuff, right. I just feel like the story, it's just, I feel like they talk to a Black person, and they actually knew a Black person. I right. feel like DC, like, watches DC, and be like, oh, this is what Black people are doing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> what it used to be. They're getting a little better now, but, yeah, that's how it we always know was. Negro. Yep, and Marvel's doing a lot of this. So like, they have Kamala Khan, the first Muslim American, one of the first Muslim American yeah. superheroes. They have uh, they made like Iceman is gay, is a gay man, and he's basically so he's a mutant and a gay man, and like his Ooh. book, he would go back. So his parents already resented him for being a mutant, but and, but they think he's straight. So he was going back home to tell them that like he came out as gay, but they were being so homophobic that he just couldn't even get it out. Like that book was really good as well. Um, so they've been doing a lot of things by just telling different stories with different people and letting different readers, because, like, this is no, it's this notion that nerd culture is full of, like, straight white men, and it's not. And if you go to any Comic-Con, you'll see it ain't just straight white men there. So nah. white women, black women, uh, LGBTQ people, like, uh, Muslim Americans, like, everybody loves these books in this genre. So being able to see themselves in these books now uh, is this really, really cool thing. So I'm definitely excited. Can't wait. Uh, that suit, did y'all see the suit? They they put for the variant cover. That suit looked dope. Yeah, the suit this is a different suit. Oh yeah, that suit is dope. And the suit is yeah. I really, I really, really, really am hoping to like see her. I know it's been way to be to like see her and Miles Morales like be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like, oh, I know how this exists because of Donald Glover. You know, his character in Spider Man. That's uh, my awful. So like he exists. Now, like in the room, like in the cinematic, right? Universe, I would just like to see him, right? He got his own, we got a movie coming out, it's animated, but I mean, still, it's animated, yeah, it's an animated yeah, movie. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm definitely yeah. taking my son, to yeah, go I'm see gonna that. see We're probably that. gonna see that a couple of times, but I would love to, like, one day be able to turn on and it be the little boy from Blackish, like, yeah, around something else and shit, you know what I mean? Like, I would like to see. Like flesh and blood, like the cartoon. I can't wait for it to come out to the Spider Verse, which I love. Anyway, I'm just I'm always one of when they do the multi shit. But yeah, so I'm 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 really hoping like this is the kind of stuff that just to imagine like a fucking real movie with Shirley and Riri in it, just like running and shit and being some black girls like and I'm Moon like, Girl, and they they go to New York to see Moon Girl. <laughs> under- girl yeah. So that reminds us. Uh, so Devin chose that as our next uh comic book character to do next month so next month we're going to do a history of moon girl episode so that'll be out in september because that ties along with this so we're looking forward to that because i love that book um also tying into that jeff lemire he's a writer uh he's wrote a bunch of stuff but he he went on twitter and basically shitted on all these comic geeks dudes so if you're familiar with like gamergate it's basically a bunch of like alt-right dudes that's like hates minorities hates marginalized people 
in video games, and they got the same type of thing with comic books. Like they think that's why they're like comic books don't aren't good anymore because the Social Justice Warriors making everything. Yeah, SJWs, blah blah blah. So Jeff Lemire basically was like, uh, "Fuck you!" And then he started he started naming like all these alt right comic book like creators that like work for Marvel and DC, and he's basically like, "Y'all don't have no parts. Like y'all shouldn't be in the industry." Like it was like real cool to see somebody do that. Um, and then he was like, Comics Gate is based on fear, intolerance, bigotry, and anger. The comic creators emerging today are too talented, too smart, and too loud to be beaten by these weak people. It's time we all started standing up for one another. So, like, anytime you get a white, straight white man with a platform and some power in the industry to say that shit, uh, it's the least that he can do. So, I'll give him credit for it. Because, honestly, yeah. you don't yeah. have to do it. So, like, as a straight white man, he could just be quiet. Like, he don't have to say anything. He'd be just fine. So, the fact that he's doing that is uh, is cool. Applaudable. Yeah, yeah cool. definitely. Uh, all right. This one, I, I'm i like, this is like, who asked for this? So, y'all remember that video game Galaga when we was real little? Where it's like yeah. the arcade and it's like it's pretty much centipede. In the airplane and you shoot the little things. So, right. so uh, apparently they're getting a TV show. What? How? <laughs> I said I didn't know there was a story behind Gallagher. <laughs> oh dear! I'm about to say I'm giving Pac-Man and stuff, but Pac-Man definitely had a show. Pac-Man absolutely yeah. had a corny ass cartoon, but I do I watch Pac-Man's Christmas show. every Christmas year, every Christmas season. I watch Pac-Man's Christmas because that's ridiculous. I <laughs> what is the story? Hold up! Like most video games of that era, there wasn't much of a story to the original Galaga. Players control the exactly. spaceship, firing their rows of insects who slowly descend on the craft. Some who break formation to attack the ship. So this shit ain't even got no damn story. Like, what are they doing? Why are they? Oh. But look, Tetris keep reading. Be next. What does it say? Uh, when you keep reading, this says the guy from uh, one of the director from uh, producer from Star Trek is coming over to, to do the story. Yeah, and I not saw knowing that. If he just <laughs> it's still it's Galaga. Just name it something else. Like this looks ridiculous. It's like what what they gonna make a Tetris TV show next? The fuck? Didn't they have a show called? Didn't they have a Battleship show? Oh, uh, they did like have a Battleship, battleship show. Game? Or was that a movie? I guess it was, it was a movie. Like, Rihanna, Rihanna, Rihanna was in it. it. Rihanna, Rihanna, Rihanna was in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Rihanna was was in the Battleship movie. Yeah, you yeah. never seen that? Yeah, battleship no. Movie. Yeah. I mean, like, it was. It's not a good movie. No, it was a pretty bad movie, but it was like. <laughs> I mean, it was Rihanna in the damn Navy, y'all. Like, you know <laughs> that's why we got Rihanna Navy, yo. <laughs> Can't even like. I'll pretty much watch anything with Rihanna in it, though. I mean, that's just me. I'm kind of yeah. One of those I'm, I'm, oh yeah, I'm, she dilated my pupils when I was in the gym one night, and I was like, you know what? She got me. Like Rude Boy was on, I was like, why are my eyes dilated? I what? I'm just trying to. Rihanna work out. dilated your pupils at the gym. Yo, she, you gotta see her. You gotta see Rude Boy. Like she in this white little little tiger suit. I mean, cat suit, and she just she was moving, and it got me. And I didn't know that I was under the spell, and uh, my the, eyes were dilated. The Rihanna very, thirst uh, is a reoccurring thing on our show. With everybody who comes on mm-hmm. our show, male and female, it's just all Rihanna thirst. On our show, yeah. so because so, Rihanna, yeah. I, I love her. Like, <laughs> yeah. I would leave my family behind for Rihanna. <laughs> like okay, I had ever, okay. Like if I, I ever met her, I'd like, be incredibly. Like, I would, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I don't have no kids or whatever, so I'm really just leaving like my mom and my friends. But I would still be like, okay, bye, y'all. Mm. Rihanna's I ever met... calling. Rihanna's calling. I must yeah. answer. If I ever met Rihanna in real life, I feel like I would be incredibly intimidated. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I. No, I no. feel like I would a little bit too. I feel like she's super cool, but you would just still be intimidated by her. Like you said, uh, I'd be her. I'm gonna be like, like Robin, what like, up, boo? <laughs> no, I'm yeah, not saying boo, but I'm like, I'm gonna be like, you yeah. Feel like that. yeah, you think that? I know I wouldn't. I'm not there. No, cause she, no, I didn't need her. I need to hear her talk. I need to hear her talk one time. But if she put that accent on, cause she don't talk like normal people. She don't talk normal when she with her people. She talked that island shit, and I'm like. So we gonna act like you don't be doing interviews with your regular voice, and now you gonna you gonna get in front of company and act like you're from old island? Okay, that's what, that's what we do. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, so Blackish creator Kenya Burrs. First of all, he just signed like a nine figure deal or eight figure deal with Netflix. 
So he going on that. Yes. Shout out to some him. black so shit. Yes. Is secure in the bay, and uh, apparently they're gonna reboot Bewitched with an interracial family. Yeah, I saw that. So did y'all watch Bewitched on like Nick and Night? I was a kid. Bewitched was my. I ain't fuck with it, but I it was good. Witch. I was a witch because of Bewitched. Like, I be trying to yeah. see if I know. She was. Same was the shit. Same was the shit. I didn't really like the show, but I mean, I, I watched it. I thought with both Dan. That's the only time they replaced the character, and I wasn't just super bad. I was like, this is not going to be all right. I can't. It wasn't nothing to <laughs> Like, I, Brandon, me and Brandon will stand for Get Smart. Like, our Nick and Night show. Oh, yeah, Get Smart. Get smart like, was and, and love, I love Lucy, but like, but Get Smart is Oh, like yeah, the shit. Lucy was. I love Lucy, Mary Tyler Moore, Bewitched, I Dream with Jeannie. Dick Van Dyke Show was my shit, though. Like, yo, Dick Van Dyke show was too white for me. Dick Van Dyke, I love Dick Van Dyke. You know, Mary Tyler Moore? And then Will King said she's the only one pants one time a season. Like, Patreon was that fucking strong. Like, people complained about her wearing pants on the episode. Called like a compromise. She made was like, well, I got to wear these pants at least one time a season. So it says, the new version of Bewitched will put a much different spin on the show. Deadline is reporting that the show will follow a biracial family. Barris will write the pilot script alongside blackish writer producer Yamara Taylor, which follows Samantha, a hardworking black single mother who marries Darren, a white mortal who is described as a bit of a slacker. The couple struggles to reconcile the differences as Samantha begins to realize that even though she can literally conjure magic, she's still not as powerful as a decently tall white man with a full head of hair in America. Uh, I think they got me. Listen. I'm in. Uh, <laughs> That's going to be good. They're off the air before they get on. Oh, it's Netflix. It's Netflix. Oh. It's, no, it's, it's not Netflix. Netflix. Oh, it's going to be on ABC. Oh, okay. It's going to be on ABC? Yes. Oh, never mind. Oh, yeah, they ain't going to make it. That ain't going to make it. Oh. Oh. Oh, they got some kinky right out the air, but we're going to go with the kinky the kinky that they let us see. That sounds oh, like man. some shit I want to see. <laughs> oh, that man. That's going to be an interesting fucking thing. Like, that is immortal anyway. Like, that's wild. It is literally I'm gonna getting like, light. Hey, I'm going to be twitching her nose, pissed off, like, God damn it, he's still. <laughs> 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 her mom, I'm like, who's going to play the mama? Who's going to play the mama? Because her mama was a beast on the show. Like, yeah. yeah. She oh, hated Darren. They probably gonna get Jennifer Lewis to do it. <laughs> no, they like, need to I need get. Uh, Lewis as the hate man they need to get. Like, um, I need that. What's what's? Oh God! Damn, I should forget her name. For what's um? What's the woman name from? Oh, I love her too. And I can't believe we're getting the name from Luke Cage. Um. Uh, Hold she, on. she played Myra. I mean, she played uh, Big Mariah. Oh, Lynn, 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 uh, Lynn Whitfield. No, that's not, not Lynn, her name. No, her name is uh, Alfred Woodard. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alfred Woodard. Yeah. Alfred yes. Woodard. I couldn't think of her I name. I could see Alfred Woodard. I could see Lynn Whitfield because Lynn Whitfield just got that bougie bitch. Lynn Whitfield, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, she do. Because the mama, the mama was a beast. Like she was, she was on Dan Nick constantly, and I would just love to see a black ass mama and her white ass son in law Nick just all the damn time. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's literally given term to black girl magic. We we got it. I can we got black it. girl magic. That's why exactly. like, I'm, I'm with it. I can't wait to watch that. So I'm I'm in. Uh, black Lightning is coming back. Uh, did y'all love Black Lightning season one? I have like three more episodes, so I do this. We do this terrible thing in my house. We try to let everything pile up and then we get bogged down with a million other shows and never finish it. But I really like the Black Lightning. It was just dope to see like. A short hair, dark skin woman, just be like the apple of somebody's eye. Like, I love the other part of the storyline. That black girl. That shit was real. Like, that shit was. It was a little respectability stuff that kind of. A little bit. But I think his daughters, his daughters do a good job of kind of like bringing that that element down. Like, they kind of. His daughters are a little woke, and I like that. Thunder and like that. She went too woke. Went too woke. Very impressed with that. I hate that it's not in the airhead version. Like, I'm over there, but, you know, you can't have everything. It'd be funny, though. Like, Mike wants it to be in the Arrowverse. And I was always like, uh, it'd be weird because... He is going to be in the crossover. He always fighting sure. these black shit. And then, like, I'd be like, but the Flash ain't going to, like, come fight some black shit. Like, he ain't going to, like... They have, yeah, they, got, they have nigga shit going on. <laughs> yeah, but they're going to... They'll have a common enemy. It's not going to have anything to do with any of the shows. 
Yeah, they like sure. they he, I'm pretty sure they already said he's going to be in the crossover. I'm pretty sure they already said Well, that. we'll see. But I'm excited. It's going to well, be back in a couple weeks. I'm uh, really waiting on um, that woman, though. Like, yes. That's, that's what I care about, like, being yes. in the crossover. Like, that's why Nikki Lee's world. Like, I want to see, I want to see that woman. Me, too. That's I can't I wait. And then she's Ruby. Is Ruby, uh... Ruby is like, gonna be that woman, so yeah, it's gonna, that's gonna be, be everything. I'm gonna be thirsty every yeah. I'm gonna be so thirsty because I love her. She was so good in John Wick too. God, she was so good. Right, she was good in John right. Wick too. That's true. Uh, all right, this is for you, Mike. Uh, they still plan on making that dumbass Alfred TV show. That's a terrible idea. Yeah, I've already told so you. So I don't you know if y'all terrible. know about this, Gabby and Lauren, but on the on the Wait, cha- what? so on the show on the channel Epics, like you know the movie channel like Epics. They are yeah. making a TV show called Pennyworth. It's about Alfred, Bruce Wayne's butler. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna be good. I'm no. To know a bit why? Why? What, who, what is he gonna do? Because you know, you gotta, I don't wanna know. I mean, a man that can take care of a spoiled, entitled little brat like that. <laughs> that's that, true. Um, keep his sanity. I'm gonna leave him. Like I would like to know what Alfred. My man's a whole time killer. He's a yeah, killer. Yeah, but this is about Alfred. This is about Before. young Alfred. Oh, this is young Alfred. This is young Alfred. Uh, this might actually be interesting. Let me see. What does it say? I think he's like in the... He's, I think he's, he's like... Get Jason, the Jason Omer of Alfred. I, I'm okay with yes, that. Yes. He so says, this, this incarnation of Alfred is very much a self-centered young man who would reportedly rather make fun of British high society than be a part of it. I think he's like in a British, uh, like CIA type thing. Yeah. Uh, back in, so this is in England. So, all right, look, look, y'all giving it a chance. Uh, I watch anything nerdy. So, I mean, I even watched Gotham, I watched, and that was horrible. I feel like I, if you, I feel like if you can watch Gotham, you can probably watch this. And I'm thank you. Like, God, Gotham God, Gotham you watch Gotham? I don't. Oh, but I'm just saying. You tried. Though. You did try. Gotham you did try. You did try. Gotham and 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 Listen, as long as they don't have Alfred punching 12-year-old girls in the face in this show, I'm good. Because that's what happened on Gotham. I wonder what they... I don't know. I, I, I'm going to give it a hand. I can, I can watch anything once. I will, I will watch that. I will watch that. Because I don't think that's going to be good. Like, I don't want to see Alfred being shows that way. Okay, okay. Maybe I'll give it a chance. I'm, I'm here. I'm here to give everyone a chance, okay? I've always been into the Alfred. Like, I don't, and I don't know why. I think the last, so this this newer Alfred that we have, he's kind of snarky and, and kind of a dick, you know, the Daniel Justice Alfred. And I kind of like it. So I'm thinking maybe if they if they're showing like a younger version of him, then yeah, I can I can fuck with it. it. It sounds like Kingsman to me. That's all it sounds like. They got a little yeah, boy Kingsman. Like Kingsman. That's a, a little bit. Yeah. yeah, you know what? That's yeah. That's kind so of I'm I'm out. It. Yeah, I'm out. That's uh. <laughs> Uh, all right, this is what Mike likes to talk about. Well, he likes to shit on these people, and so do we. Uh, so, Star Wars star Kelly Marie Tran, uh, she she kind of she finally talked about why she got off Instagram when those uh, racist ass Star Wars trolls were fucking with her on Instagram, and so she had to leave. And so she came back, and she was basically like, "I want to live in a world where children of color don't spend their entire adolescence wishing to be white." And I said, "Look at her." Look at Kelly Ooh, Marie. Okay, so she basically, okay. we talked about this on the show, but a few, like a couple months back, like people, like all these white Star Wars fans were all, like harassing her on Twitter, calling her all types of Asian racist names and mad that she was in the movie. And that she looked like she had like this relationship with Finn and it, they were just all mad about that. So she, she just couldn't take it anymore. She got off Instagram because she was getting harassed online. And so she had she did an interview with the New York Times, basically talking about what that experience was like, and uh, why she got off Instagram and why she got back on Instagram. So she recently got back on. So I know Mike uh, hates those dudes, and he talks about them all the time. But we hate the Star Wars nerds and the Star Wars stands because they're the, they're they might be the worst fandom there is, like like the most toxic fandom there is. I forgot what I was reading, but I remember I read the thing about how they did the guy who played George R. B. or whatever. Oh yeah, and yeah. How basically, like he just he just literally like stopped acting. The little boy who played young Anakin, 
they fucking harassed the shit out of him to the point where he didn't want to act anymore. Like, that's, that's something else. Like, that's not even, like, fandom. Like, that's, that's, that, I don't know. That, that's just wild. Yeah, they, yeah. Hey, I don't Christensen. know how you feel so entitled to something to where you just want to make people miserable. Like, I, I don't get it. I don't get that. Yeah, I don't. I mean, it's just this That's, toxic like, shit. Like, all these people can in space. Like, how you know what people in space look like? Like, why? I don't... And why do y'all have to be white? Like, why do y'all want everybody to be white? Like, it's not even... That's not even realistic for, like, real life. There's no... I mean, there are places to go where everybody's fucking white. But, I mean, just why would you think in fucking space, in the fucking future, <laughs> that everybody gonna be fucking... In, I don't... I, and I remember, and I forgot what this was, and I know it's not Star Wars related, but like some guy was going on this thing about like how a black mermaid couldn't exist because science doesn't support it. I don't know what? science <laughs> doesn't support a fucking. Yes, like he went on a whole thing and was like, yes, because of like, it was the uh, and, I don't know what it's but like, it's gonna get dying. Like, why Because then Daya is gonna be the live action Little Mermaid. Yeah, and, then, and, and he was like, so for the to have melanin. Yes, and like, Da, 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 da. And I was like, okay, well, first of all, she is light skinned, so we don't need that much mess. <laughs> like, we don't need that. Much but then also, I remember somebody in the main person that was like, a, a sand mermaid is scientifically like not found because as a mammal, you would need blubber or whatever to keep yourself warm underwater, so they just would all be real in with huge boobs. So you know, I don't know, but. No. Yeah, but it was just like he really thought he was doing something with the whole like, well, it science. Was it's down. like. Bro, mermaids don't fucking exist. They say they do. They don't. They don't exist in the way we think they are. Yeah, so that's like, why. Yeah. I, Even if you're entertaining yourself, like everything gotta be white. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Why? Why does it need to look any different? It's here for my consumption. That's why I was always. I, I mean, I love Star Wars now, especially since they Disney's taken over and has made it more diverse. But I used to always be more into Star Trek because. It was always more diverse. Yeah, I like, I like Star Trek more. Except, like, if you go watch, like, I recently watched the, uh, there's this episode from Star Trek The Next Generation called Code of Honor, and it's, like, <laughs> it's, you, everybody should go watch that. Like, if you're ever bored, it's on Netflix. Just go watch Star Trek Next Generation Code of Honor. It's just super, it's so racist that it's funny. Like, they basically go to, like, this black planet. And like the black men on there, are like super hoteps, like they so like they see this white woman, and they're all like fawning all over her because she's got fair skin. And then they make like, and then oh, the black women oh. and the white woman oh. fight over the African king, like not African, but they basically had give them an African accent, and they wear like African garbs, and they make them fight over the king to be his wife. It's like super racist. It's so racist, but it's funny as shit. What's the one? And the Klingons though. But yeah, the Cleons, like, they black. What you talking about? Like, that's what I was thinking. Like, they're hold black. on. The, no, this the ain't Cleons. Like, this is like another race of black people. Oh, so, shit. Like, some other planet they went to. It is super and racist. I can't, I can't think of it. What's the Star Trek? What's the one with the bald-headed black guy? Deep Space Nine. Deep Space Nine. Deep Space Nine. Yeah, Deep he was the shit. Okay, so those, 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 those always trip me out because they always do the super black shit with him, like, he was talking to his son or something one day, and he was like, Dad, you don't know some of that jambalaya like you were telling me about when you was a kid? And I was like, what the fuck are you about to make some jambalaya at on the ship? Like, and, what, and who told y'all that we all eat jambalaya like that? He <laughs> <laughs> was like, just daddy, make some of these jambalaya like you used to make when you was a boy. Like, your daddy been on the ship for the past fucking 50 years. He ain't even had no jambalaya. Fuck no, that nigga forgot. Uh, all right. I figured I I was laughing. I was watching this and I was fucking dying. And so I figured Lauren and Gabby had some thoughts on this because this shit was so ridiculous. So did y'all see Madonna's tribute to Aretha Franklin? Oh, they talked about it. Oh yeah, y'all yeah. did talk about that. So That's we right. Talked about this. We talked about it. Yeah, this is, I still have going to hell. She's going to hell. What the fuck? First of all, what was she wearing? She wearing that shit crazy. <laughs> Ooh, that was the best of a cultural appropriate. Yeah, literally, she was just microaggressing whatever culture she stole her whole entire outfit from. Yeah, she like, like one of them elephants, fuck, like though. them elephants that be having all that shit on. Like she literally like one of them elephants, the mystical elephants that like don't exist and shit. They got two heads on on, on like either side. Like that's what she looked like. I'm like, what is she doing right now? She had on. And then That's she, it. 
She gave a five minute speech. And the whole gist of it had to do with Aretha Franklin was like, one time I had to do an audition and they had me singing an Aretha song. And I'm like, what? And I just feel like that's a lot. I thought we were going to ask some people. People were like, first of all, bitch, you didn't sing any song. Like, I do not believe that. I just felt like she just felt like she had to do that because Aretha died on her birthday. So she had to just try to switch it and make it about her. Well, is there, how big has anybody ever actually heard Madonna sing? No. Like, and I, I know that one song in real life. I didn't know that she sang. I thought she was a dancer. Like, for years, I thought Madonna was a dancer. Like, the first song like, I ever remember was Ray of Light. And I was like, oh, this is yeah. the singer. Okay. Like, I know she's a, like, I knew she was a singer, but I'm just saying, like. She's a performer. She danced. I've never she understood had, yeah. why people were always like, oh, my God, Madonna's the best. Like, I knew she was a good entertainer. But to me, she just reminded me, like, of Britney Spears. Like, nobody would ever be like, oh, Britney Spears, too. Hey, like nobody. Britney Spears ain't had no sex book you could put in your coffee table though. Oh, I, guess, I guess so. I guess that's true. I, guess so. I, 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 I mean, don't know. I'm not staying. I just really like, like that <laughs> Charles Barkley and Charles Barkley. I was just like, yeah, that's no, no, Robin. That's Robin. I feel like I'm oh, yeah, Robin. Oh yeah, it was Dennis Robin. Dennis Robin. Robin. It's, it's Dennis Robin. Dennis Robin was blowing her back out, yo. Dennis Robin. Dennis Robin. Oh, okay. Wait, no, what was that on stage? Who was playing? That was Dennis Robin playing. Like, I, I'll never thank Madonna again. Or was that Charles Barkley? Because that's what I'm remembering. That no, Charles Barkley ain't never messing with no Madonna. Charles Barkley doing it, but who knows? I got to, I have to, I'm now I got to go watch Space Jam because I got to go see who was in the church asking God for their power stack. And he was like, I'll never go on a, a date with Madonna again or something like that. <laughs> oh, that probably oh, was Charles Barkley. It might, it might, it might work Charles Barkley. Right. <laughs> but she was, she was smacking. She was getting smacked by Dennis Rodman and, and other black dudes. I can see that though. I can see that. I, I, I can, can so I see can that. Totally see that. Cause he dated Kareem Alexa too, I think. Yeah, he yeah. definitely Smack dated Kareem Alexa. He did. Uh, did y'all like, see? That was the whole thing. Did y'all see Black Klansman? No, I haven't, I haven't seen it. it. So I've heard. So this is I. So I've heard some people said it was really good. And I've heard some people say it was really bad. I didn't like it. And then I just saw this story about, I want to say Bootsy Collins, but I know this guy is Boots <laughs> Riley. <laughs> yeah, Boots Riley. I'm, black, I'm old and I'm black, and I'm just going to say whoever said <laughs> We know who you were talking about. We, we know. know. We, we, know. we got you. <laughs> so I've seen, I just read that, or I didn't read the whole article, but I read somebody's commentary about that. And so now I'm just like, well, damn, I was going to go see it, but I don't know. So it's Which a good film. My... It's a good film. It's like yeah. any other Spike film. So it's kind of like heavy handed, but he did a yeah. good job of like holding back for the most part in this film. And it's funny as shit uh, as well. So it's a, it's an enjoyable I video. I like John David. That's why I want to go. Oh, yeah. He's like, great. Yeah, he's awesome. great in it. Yeah, he's great. That um, boy good. Like, just like his daddy. That boy good. Like, that boy good. Like, but I think he's like, that's his daddy. Like, that's crazy. Like, his dad is that good. And for him, to, like, he was really good in his, like, performance. Like, his whole performance in this movie was great. But for Denzel to be his daddy, like, he did him proud. He really did him proud in this movie. And you know what's so funny? He said he really, like, tried to not act, like, put on with his thing because he was Denzel Washington's son. And that just, he just wanted to do his own thing. He just, the nigga couldn't make him as a football ball. player. The nigga couldn't I make him really as a football him. player. I really enjoy him on ball league. Oh yeah, he's so good do on I, balls. Girl. I need to start watching it again. I definitely enjoy him on ballers for reasons Wait, that my are mama, purely. My mama had a weird, <laughs> nasty obsession with Denzel Washington, and I used to couldn't understand it. And I feel like she's getting like a real kick out of this in heaven because I love me some John David Washington. Like, listen, <laughs> so ballers got John David Washington and The Rock. So which one is uh, which one is Ooh. um? Okay, we can't talk it. Like, so I am a like, I'm gonna just say two two because I'm not listening. Because like, Ballers is essentially soft porn for me. Like, <laughs> oh, oh. Let me find out you got some Cinnaporn. You got Cinnaporn uh, program ready. Like, ready. You put these two gorgeous men in suits and they. <sighs> also, listen. Ballers is the only time I've ever seen The Rock do a sex scene. Ever. Yes. Thank it, God for that. He'll never do no sex scenes in his movies. I like I follow him on Instagram and he uh when he does his like weight lifting and stuff when he does leg day, he had one video of him doing like uh bridges. Like he was looking girl, <laughs> I see about you. how much he could 
put on his hips, and I was like, well, I'm waiting for that, so let's get to the <laughs> like, I have one oh. of your little babies for you. Like, he obviously good at making babies, so. How many kids he got? I thought he only had two. So, do you, he y'all remember three. when, um, has, oh, go ahead. Oh, the bad. last two he had with that white girl were like back to back. I was like, okay, sis. Oh, okay. Okay. I wouldn't wait my six weeks either. So, do y'all remember like, back when? Y'all remember WWE? Like that was ooh. Y'all remember? Ooh, yes. Y'all remember when DJ Cali was like he don't perform oral sex on his wife because he's a kid. And the rock was like, <laughs> the rock was like, I would have said. The rock said, "I take great pride in mastering all performances." Listen, <laughs> listen. We talked about oh, that on man. the show, uh, and our other co-host Danielle was all all excited, all excited. Oh, I mean, because it's he is a go- like he's one of those people that, to be honest, he's so gorgeous that I'm just waiting on something terrible to come out about him. <laughs> no, he's, he's so gorgeous. You know, he used to be so, a Republican. He's so charismatic. He used to be a Republican, but I don't think he's one no more. Like, Darryl, I don't know. Hey, look, if he, if 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 he want to run as a Republican, I give him. A, hey, look, I give him a listen. Not gonna lie, because he can unite the world. That that mulatto man can unite the look, world. White people do all... love the Rock, though. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, because everybody yeah. loves the Rock. Everybody. Everybody. Like, you can't hate him. He's just <laughs> oh, he loves the Rock. Black people love the Rock. That's what I'm saying. So like, if he runs as a Republican, I'm gonna have to listen before I be like, nah. But I'll listen. So speaking of another, um, speaking of another handsome, tall Samoan Get. man, uh, <laughs> apparently women are super excited to see Aquaman. What a shock! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Like, like the Aquaman movie is like you know the running joke about Aquaman being you know the goofiest of the super friends and just they're useless. They're useless. Look what they do. He talks to fish. They know the perfect motherfucking way to get an audience in that theater. Jason fucking Momoa. They know we finna come out for that. They know we finna come out for that. Hey, I'm in hey, that. You got your hot sauce ready, don't you? You got the hot sauce ready. I ain't never cared thing. about Arthur Curry. I ain't never cared about no more. I, I, only thing I used to say about Arthur Curry is, you know what? That sounds like a black name. But I never <laughs> cared about Arthur Curry. Like, that's true. It does that's, sound like a black I, I always name. I always was like, I would read his name and be like, Arthur Curry sounds like one of my cousins. And you know, hey. <laughs> And that's why he, that's why he was a bastard. That's why his daddy didn't give a fuck. Damn shame. His See? daddy ain't give a fuck. <laughs> See, Damn shame. But I'm I'm ready. I am ready. I want to see him talk to all the fucking bitch. I want to <laughs> go to Samoa. That's what I want to do. <laughs> 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 that's what I want to do. I don't even know how I feel about that. That was hilarious though, because you were serious too. You like you know what? Oh what yeah, I'm Cal, Cal Drogo been getting the women for ten years now. <laughs> Uh, well, probably more than that, but yeah, like that's yeah. I mean, he got Lisa Bonet. He got hey, look, he got an old got ass it. wife. Lisa Bonet got her. She got her one. She was like, I am not fucking around. I'm gonna hold on to this one. And he loves the fuck out of her. And I think that's I what it. makes me like him more. Yeah, too. He, I mean, he act like he ain't never met a better woman in the world than her. Like he's always talking about her. And I just know she. And I knew she got some fire. Like I, just you knew it. She Yo, got, we, she got we knew it back in the, the, the Hustable days. Mm-hmm. You know she was throwing that ass, and you know it's yeah. amazing. You know it's amazing. Her daddy, she on, I mean, she on some other shit. Yeah. Then when she got with Lenny, you knew, you knew they was a new level pussy. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't think I don't think Lenny and uh I don't think Lenny and Homeboy are the same in the same class. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean I think she's I probably know. happier now. I'm just I agree. That. I think she is too. I feel like I feel like Lenny just be on some other I feel like he was just always on some other shit. Like I think he loved I think he was in love with himself. Yes. And everything else came second. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so we're almost out of here because we kept we've been on a long time, so it's just a couple more stories. Uh, so they did a poll on uh, the favorite Disney movies in every state. So, oh Lord. what do y'all think? That, what do y'all think the most? I mean, not the the most popular movies in every state. So, what do y'all think the most popular Disney movie in the great state of Texas is? Oh, what's that old one about racism? <laughs> 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 oh, what song gonna sound? <laughs> Like, I'm so nervous. I don't want to say it. So like, I don't the, answer, I'm so scared the answer is The Little Mermaid. Really? Oh. Okay, that's not 
Y'all was shook. Y'all was so shook, yo. That's so, hilarious. So Devin is from Virginia. So what do you think is yours? Um, I want to say, oh man, Cinderella maybe. Bambi. I feel like y'all was Pocahontas. Bambi. Bambi. Oh, Bam! I mean, Pocahontas yeah. should be a, our favorite, though. You're right, though. Look at you, knowing your geography. Uh, <laughs> Mike, you're from mm-hmm. Pittsburgh. What's Pennsylvania's movie? What do you think it is? Um, uh, I don't know. Mine is Atlantis. Yeah. I think that's the best Disney movie. So Pennsylvania picked The Lion King. Uh, oh, look. They look cool. Pennsylvania really? woke. That's... We jealous. We all jealous. We all jealous. And I'm what from America Maryland, pick, and we picked Bambi because you know. Oh yeah, we, we might as well be neighbors. You know what I mean? So the most popular. Why are you watching Bambi? Because we hunt. We, we out here they're doing they're it. Movie. Apparently, you know my daddy. But go ahead. Go ahead. The most popular uh, my movie daddy. in the country is by is that has the most states is The Lion King. It should be. It should mm-hmm. be. That makes sense, though. A movie about Africa with no black people in it, I could see Oh, that. shit. <laughs> I could definitely see them shit being a oh, thing. Like, you got Jonathan Taylor Thomas, Man, what happened Africa, to that dude, like, yo? What look, happened to that dude? Man, what happened to that dude? You can tell the you can he tell the state. He took his busy money and went underground. You can tell the state. He just said Macaulay Culkin. He was like, "Fuck that! I got my shit." You can tell the states that had black people voting. So New Jersey picked Atlantan. Uh, okay. Hawaii picked Milan, of course. Good. Did anybody pick the Frog movie? Because I'm on the judge that stage. The Louis, Mississippi. Nah, nope. I nobody mean, picked the Frog. Mississippi picked yes. uh, Fantasia. Okay. Nebraska picked Man, the Fox they, and the they, Hound. They down there on high, so I can see that. They down there on some high shit. I can, I can see that. <laughs> uh, nobody, everybody pretty much picked the same. Said Washington State picked Winnie the Pooh. Uh, no. Of course, of course <laughs> Vermont bad, picked 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> that makes sense. That white ass state. Wow. Okay. Uh, Sleeping Beauty was picked by Idaho. That makes sense too. Oh yeah, that makes very much wow. sense. Idaho picked Sleeping Beauty. I would think that's like. Who picked 101 Dalmatians? It's a boring ass. Vermont. Thing, so it's a Vermont. Ass movie, oh, did. here we go. The oh. one racist movie was picked by New York. Dumbo. Well, Dumbo. Wow. Of course. Yes, Dumbo has some racist parts in the movie. I wouldn't say oh, the whole. Yeah. Dumbo is an overall sad movie. Anyway, anything where the children is getting taken from their moms, I don't know what the. The parts of the class that you see, and we literally like had a whole discussion about like why Disney was fucking evil. Uh, I don't know, but yeah, Dumbo made me sad. Dumbo was sad. Dumbo I remember being you know, Yeah, I remember as a kid being sad about Dumbo. Like, like why are they fucking with him? Leave him alone. Too much. Can they just leave him alone? I cried <laughs> really when I was a kid. I mean, like I ain't cry, but I was like, saying the shit. Yeah, I was saying the shit. Broke into sobs over Free Willy. Like, my mom had to stop the movie and be like, what is wrong? And I was like, I just don't understand why they won't let him be free. <laughs> 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 I was a whole right. planeteer. Right. I was a whole planeteer growing up, so I definitely uh, was out here like sad as shit when I was watching Free Willy. I was like, "Fire! I would, I want to free him!" Like, "Oh man, too bad." Yeah. Maybe that's why I don't like the zoo now. Like, I don't with the, I don't like animals like that. But like, no. I also had younger siblings, so I used to watch Madagascar all the time, and I that's like, gonna go. Oh, these animals. I'd be like, y'all gonna be at the zoo one day and them animals gonna break free and I'm not gonna feel sorry for you. So, like, nope. I'm mad, I'm I'm get so, I get so mad at I'm not gonna call I'm not gonna call out people, but it's just, society in general. <laughs> if an alligator go alligator, you you gotta kill the alligator because the alligator bit somebody or, or ate somebody. I like that's like what he's supposed to do, right? Like, I'm, gonna, oh. I'm gonna be pissed off and hit and, and wherever my afterlife is. If I get ate up by an animal, don't kill that animal because I should have been fucking up. I, I was fucking wherever up. I was. Right. I was that fucking is. up. Like that was that was going on. The yeah. only gratification I get, like you kill snakes, and snakes get in your house, you kill them motherfuckers, cause snakes are. Oh fuck snakes! I'm scared of snakes. They not yeah, animals. Wow. They not animals. Yeah, if snakes be in your business, 
Like, yeah. you know, let's like, come where you at. Like, like you be my yoga, 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 yoga. Like, here comes Snake. You be like, okay, you gotta go. But I'm in my toilet. What are you doing? Yeah, fuck yeah. snakes. That's why I feel kind of light now when I go use the restroom in the middle of the night. Because I be like, bro, if I sit down in the dark and a snake bite me, I'm I'm gonna lose it. Even if I don't. Oh, yeah, you in Texas from too. Snake bite. Oh, <laughs> If I ever see a yeah. snake in my house, I'm moving. I'm telling you that. <laughs> I, there is no coming back to that house. Uh, all right, last story tonight. Uh, Black Panther's award strategist won't settle for best popular film. So we talked about this on the show. Uh, they're creating this new category in the Oscars called popular film, which is kind of, I think oh. is a good idea because it's going to get more people Oscars. But uh, Black Panther is like, uh, yeah, we think we can get best picture. So we're not settling for best popular film. <laughs> How about no? <laughs> mm-hmm. How about you put this in the category? That's a movie Oscar. full of black people not suffering. Y'all ain't getting yeah. nothing from the Oscars. Yeah. Like, if you want to drug or fat or fat or race or gay, like, they, 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 they don't want to see it. No. Yeah, black every- people out here thriving. And it's. They was calling white people colonizers. And it's not even just the black movies, right? Because like, if you ever look at the movies that are on, so like, uh, like I review movies, so sometimes, so um, we get like the movie critic association I'm in, we get like to we get to review Oscar shit, right? So whenever you get like the best picture movies, like all of them are like some sad shit. Like they're never happy. Like the only one that was like. yeah, the only one that was quote unquote I was happy. Thinking about no, go ahead. Precious was a, was a horrible movie that Monique got an award for. Fucking Halle Berry got a uh, monster ball. Monster ball, yeah. That. Mm-hmm. that was the That's... sad shit. What, what was the movie with the with the with the sea monster and a woman? Shape of Water. Uh, never really mm-hmm. Shape of Water. It's just it's just always some other shit going. On. <clears throat> Shape because of Water was I dope think as shit. Back to America's wait, purest handical roots. And we just like to see people suffer. Please wow. enjoy pain. That's that's good. Did but you in, just in, listen to the Lord? Like I, I feel like it's never anything like pie. It ain't. It's like the real pie, but it's just some goofy ass shit like La La Land. It's like, it's like oh yeah, it's I was about to say that shit. Yeah. It's the last thing you want to see in the world. I hated La La Land. Yeah. I hated that shit. Man. And the I words of Forrest Whitaker. I didn't have to see it to know I hated it. It was like oh yeah, no, nah, I never, I never, I never gave him a chance. Never. Yeah, Keep it. Was, it. Yeah, Keep yeah, it. white people jazz. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, the, and yeah. it was the reverse. It was like these white people, like teaching black people about jazz and shit. It okay, was, well, it was so fucked up. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't. Yeah, know. and then and wasn't and, there love for about them not being able to be together? Yes. Always some, some BS going on. Yeah, no, I'm good. Mm-mm. Yeah. Mm-mm. And the words of my man Forrest Whitaker from Black Panther: "There will be no challenge today." <laughs> <laughs> None. Uh, so, all right. So, uh, Lauren and Gabby, thank you so much for joining us. This was so much fun. Uh, before we got thank here. You. Can you uh, you guys tell everybody once again where they can find your show and uh, what's what you guys got coming up next? Um, you can find us on Instagram at Two Old Girls Podcast. That's D U R L S. Facebook and Twitter, we are just Two Old Girls. Um, Lauren, you want to tell them where you they can follow you personally? <laughs> you can follow me at I Stand Copa on pretty much everything. So it's I. I will. And you know, what do we have coming up next? Um, we actually record tomorrow, and so we'll be touching on some of the same topics we touched on tonight. But we just and definitely tell everybody to listen to you guys. Yes, episode. Um, uh, I, I thank you. Out and follow us on social media to kind of keep on doing. Gabby's always doing like some amazing, stuff. <laughs> modest about it. I, I'm not modest. I'm just like I'm just out here <laughs> trying to slowly but surely get away from my white man job. So <laughs> people keep asking me to do stuff, and I feel like I'll try it. Um, so I'm actually a uh, a writer for Society H Tech. Y'all want to follow Dope. me on there? I'm a foodie and I love food, so I do 
a lot of the food reviews and restaurant openings and things of that nature, I have the link in my bio on my personal um, Instagram page, which is Say La G. Everybody thinks it's Seth Lag, since you can't yeah. have punctuation. <laughs> everybody is me. And no, F, no, you are not the only one. Everybody was like, when I finally <laughs> explained it, people were like, oh my God, that makes so much sense. Um, because I had no idea. So it's Say La G, not Seth Lag, but it's C E S T L A Z. Hmm. You can follow me personally there, find all the stories that I've written so far. Um, and follow me on To The World Girls or, you know, follow me on my personal page and see all the foolishness I post. <laughs> oh, if you have any Houston listeners, they may be interested. Um, we're a media representative for African Houston, African Fashion Week Houston. So stay tuned with that. Like, I know nothing about fashion, but I love my African people. I love my family. So we're definitely excited about being a part of that. Yes. Where, where, when is it? When is that? Okay, in October. Oh, I'll be in the I think the 25th. The week it's of the, the 20th, 20th. It's, the, it's October 22nd to the 28th. So we'll be posting about it. We'll be at different events. Um, we'll be at like fashion shows, sitting on the side of the wave. It's, it's going to be really good. Lauren, go back and buy some real clothes too. I, I, work from home. <laughs> I never have my real clothes. <laughs> I just, yeah, I, I, if I could get away with wearing a paper bag everywhere and some doors, I would wear that. Oh, okay. Besides, okay. that's what we have coming up. <laughs> But yes, we That's appreciate awesome. y'all having us on here. It was so much fun. Yes, yeah, we have to do this again. Oh, we gotta come, y'all gotta come back to Texas. Y'all gotta come. Yes, y'all gotta come out. We gotta oh, take we'll y'all, be y'all, y'all on the show. We gotta take y'all for Ratchet Club. Yeah. I'm gonna be in the corner. I'm gonna be in the corner, but I'm there. Listen, Devin will be in the listen, Devin will be in the corner. He's gonna be in the corner with a Devin will be in the corner with a corona with grenadine in it. <laughs> no, 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 we give you some hen. <laughs> no, we give you some hen, and I don't even like hen, so. <laughs> but we got a rest of night call for a rest of drink. Exactly. At least get you some crowns. Mike, you can come get rest of the store and have some Hennessy. Don't feel excluded. Yeah, oh, listen, Mike's yeah, a lightweight. You don't have to hide in the cave. Mike got drunk off of, like, Zima. So he I can get drunk off of it. Yes, he does. <laughs> Yeah, they got Zima up here. They got Zima up here in DC. Still? Mm hmm. It came back. I I ain't buying those. I'm gonna be bringing Zayma back. I like he'll be bringing pure white Hennessy back from vacation. (laughs) Hey, guess what? I got. Hey, look, I I got like. I got like four. I got four like white Hennessy bottles in the crib right now from vacation. Oh my god! And guess what? I'm going Dominican Republic and I'm bringing them back. I'm I'm gonna sell them for like (laughs) ninety. I'm 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 selling for ninety. Oh my God! The price of the brick always yeah, got to go up. People be I'm so bad when they sold out. They be all on Instagram, man. They were sold out of all the Hennessy White. Like, okay, dude, calm down. It ain't okay. even that good. Yo. It's, it's not, not even, even that like, good. If you, like, if you really drink like yak like that, if you drink cognac and kvassi and stuff like that, like that's not even good. Like it's it's good, but like it's different. That don't matter though. Listen, I was in the club. It's really it's for the culture. Really, that shit don't matter if it's when good I or tell not. People, when I tell people I don't like Hennessy, they all look at me funny, and I'm like, y'all, Hennessy is just not that great. It's I not. drink Hennessy black. It's not. I've never, I've never liked Hennessy. I've never really liked the rock, but I just drink. Like, I don't drink that shit, because when you go in somebody's sex, and that's all they fucking order, so you yeah. got to a taste for it, but... It's so many drinks out there. Like, it's so many people wrong with it. Like, you don't have to combine yourself to get it. Yeah. So, yeah, we definitely need to take a trip. We was talking about that anyway, Devin. About I mean, th- one of y'all fly for free anyway, so let's get it. Yeah, y'all definitely need to come down here. Don't we try to ask for any? Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. All I'm saying is, uh, <laughs> look, LeBron James plays on the West Coast now. So I'm hell? doing the East Coast tour. Like, I'm a Laker fan, so oh, I'm going to all them games. Oh, the Ace Town, I'm out there. I'm out, I'm out there. I'm trying to tell y'all, I'm out there for the Houston game. Damn. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, yeah. Let's let's okay, make wait. that happen. Before let's make we that go, happen. are you a Lakers fan because you're a Lakers fan? Or are you a Lakers fan because LeBron is out there? I've been a Lakers fan my whole. I've been a Lakers fan since like the early '90s, and I've been a Cowboy fan since Why? the early '90s. Why? Uh, just because my mom played basketball uh, at Norfolk State, which is an HBCU, and she played point guard, okay. and Magic Johnson was her favorite play- basketball player. So I just, you know, I played okay. basketball. 
And I then, see how people with answers when I have like yeah. family reasons. Right, no, I've, I've been loyal to my teams from from day one. I got my ear pierced when I was five because of Emmett Smith, and I just never left. I just never Nigga, left. Nigga, you a Cowboys fan? Yeah, he a Cowboys fan. Yeah. Okay, so let's end the conversation now. Hi, <laughs> thanks for having. Me. <laughs> you guys, you awesome guys. We love you. <laughs> Damn, like yo. Y'all be really, you be serious about these rivalries, y'all. You don't be fucking with cowboy fans, yo. Like, yo. Oh, y'all are the worst people on earth. Look, they're going to like hey, me, look. though. They're going to like they're me. They're already bad. Cowboys, like, people talk about Houston and stuff, and people from Dallas are kind of insufferable. And I love Dallas, but they're kind of insufferable. Cowboys fans, plus look, we not, fans. Like, I don't even know uh, how we made it through this conversation. You're all the worst. Because, <laughs> but because look 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 this is why we I made it. Because I'm not Yankees. You were the you were the Yankees. No no I'm I'm actually a, a Braves fan. Oh okay. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, all my shit, all all my shit all my shit is in me from. And the Yankees. Yeah yeah. I, Boston people are the fucking worst people on earth. If they're Patriots fans, they're terrible people. If they're they're okay, Red Sox fans, true. they're terrible people. And yeah, the and Yankees true, fans yeah. are terrible. I mean, I mean, wherever you go, they're terrible people. See, they're going to like me. Yeah, I'm a Boston Baltimore. Boston is hella, hella racist. I will agree with you on that. I'm a Baltimore nigga that like UT. And Boston has, like, nothing to be proud of, but they're so proud. <laughs> yes. I'm a, UT, um, I'm a UT fan, so there's that. You oh, are? <laughs> fuck yeah, I love that burnt orange. That's, my my favorite color. It's, it, it's something special hey. about it. It's, like, that color is so it's pretty. Lot, it's a lot of weird shit. It is, it is. It's it's like, like, orange. <laughs> I love hey, it. Yo. I grew up, I went to school in Bristol, Virginia. Like, so, like, our our school, like, we used to root for is, is the is the real UT. It's like, I'm playing UT on the East. <laughs> that ain't the real we, uh, UT. I'll mess with you. I know. I know. No, first of all, Texas is the best shit ever, yo. But um, I just like doing, I just like doing hook them, yo, all day, every day. I like, every time I'm in Houston, I just be like, hook them. Like, <laughs> driving down the street, H-Town, hook them. The same H-Town. Time, it makes me very happy. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's, this shit dope, yo. And then y'all got James Harden out there, so, I mean, that's everything. That nigga throwing, yeah, that nigga throwing awesome. women cell phones off the roof and shit. Tour. Oh, for real? Yeah, he threw, he hey. threw Scott's there, threw some women's cell phone off the roof. It was recording. Damn. <laughs> oh, man. See, he got to have that Derek uh, Jeter clause, man. You got to leave your phone right here. If you're trying to party in my sex, you got to leave your phone. <laughs> Derek Jeter, man. What a classy guy, yo. Get your gift basket when you leave. He's like, Mr. Jeter would like you to have this gift basket on the way out. What? Okay. That's I like that. Man. That's some player. Yeah, like gift basket. Yeah. Man. All right, but That's what you know you. So thank much you guys. for coming on. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Thanks for having me. So uh, definitely go uh, follow them on all the social media. Listen to that Two Wood Girls podcast. I love it. We all love it. Uh, that's why I really love it. Hey, Mike, say orange. goodbye. Mike, are you here? Was, Mike's still <laughs> here. He just goes through these things sometimes. He's cool. Uh, <laughs> so we just did an Insecure review last night, so that's out right now. Uh, our Batman thing's coming up in a week or so. We're doing Moon Girl in a couple weeks. And we may have, we have a special guest coming up. In a couple of weeks that we'll talk yes. about next week yes, that we Mike's do. really excited about. Uh, so we got a lot of things coming up. So thank you guys for listening. Make sure you find us on iTunes, Stitcher, <laughs> Google Play, Spotify, anywhere you get your podcast at. Uh, leave us a five-star review. It helps us out a lot. And we will be back next week. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Talk to you later. I'm your-